Now, so welcome, gentlemen. This is the third part of the blockchain course where we are going to discuss pros and cons of cryptocurrencies and look at very interesting questions that I got from many students. At first, let me share the screen. Uh, I have prepared a special document where I also write my answers and also provide you with more uh, feedback, such as uh, sources that you can read. I'm going to share it with you at the end. Okay, meanwhile, we will have a chat. At first, let's have a look at uh, the CoinGecko. So Bitcoin currently sits on $17,000. Last time, last week when we had the second video, it was about 19, I believe. And then even before that, it was about 12. <laughs> so as you see, guys, it has jumped up and down a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Why the reason for that? Uh, we discussed how blockchain works. I also showed you the wallets, right? And how to send the money. So I believe now that you understand the fun fundamentals. Guys, do you know the word fundamentals? Uh, yes. How would you explain it, Carol? Uh, it's like the basics of something, like a, a Excellent. fundament for a house yeah, or very good. fundamentals for math or something. Mm -hmm. So exactly, uh, I have taught you fundamentals or in other words, basics. How, what's the technology behind, uh, what's the blockchain, right? And the technology behind Bitcoin. And th these are the fundamentals. We know the fundamentals. And then you can look at the graph uh, and you will see that, okay, one day it is 15,000, the other day it is 19. Those are not fundamentals. These are called technicals. <laughs> Technicals, right? Because today we will talk about technical analysis and the fundamental analysis. So what we did uh, last week and two weeks ago was the fundamental analysis. We discussed the fundamentals, the how it works, and uh, why there cannot be more than 21 million Bitcoin, why it is secure, uh, how it is that when I send the money, that the money always arrives and it's always correct and so on. We discussed all that. Today, we will also discuss what technical analysis is. Okay, also a little bit. Technical analysis is about uh, the graphs, all right? How the graphs work uh, and um, the market, uh, the price. So at first, let me check uh, the questions that I got. Eventually, we will get there now. Winklevoss twins have said that Bitcoin price of 500k, half a million dollars, is inevitable. Uh, maybe Hansa, can you tell us? Uh, can you explain inevitable? Can you use different words? Um, inevitable is like that you can't can't uh, dodge it. You can't miss it. You it just yeah. will happen for sure. Yes, yes. And eventually they say that it will happen, even if we go up and down. Eventually we will get there. Right after that, the price of Bitcoin starts to rise again. Do you think that this was just a mass manipulation? Uh, Ikiril, can you explain mass? Mass? Uh, mass is, uh, is a lot of people, like exactly. mass, maybe 10 million people or more. Good job, exactly. Or is BTC now really becoming more global? Now, before we continue in this question, let me show you who Winklevoss twins are. I believe, uh, so here, everything you've read about Harvard, so they studied at Harvard. What is Harvard, Hansa? Do you know? Harvard. A school, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's I'm in America or Britain, I'm not sure yeah. now. In the US, that's the most US. popular college um, or university in the US. And these are the guys. Now, uh, Carol, do you know anything about those guys that you can share uh, with us? Well, well I asked that question, so I like, I read a bit about them that mm -hmm. they were like um they wanted to create facebook with mark zuckerberg but he uh dumped them and i think they invested into bitcoin very early and they become billionaires on that on that uh yeah that's all i know yeah very good point so basically two guys that are super rich from bitcoin because they were early investors and um yeah you were right so they are not just you know smart by investing they also uh, they studied at harvard which already itself is an achievement mm -hmm. but also um they set up the gemini or gemini in english i should say gemini um exchange i'm sure that Kirill, you, you know binance there's also yeah, a thing called gemini exchange 
and uh, they set it up. It's their it's their baby, we can say. Mm -hmm. And it's a very highly regulated marketplace where you can buy and sell cryptocurrency, and it is mainly focused on the on the American market. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, now they are trading also for euro. I mean, of oh. course, it's welcome for everyone. Yeah, uh, but it is mainly for the American audience. So uh, they are behind this. They are trying to promote Bitcoin to make it more popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they said, right? The question is, right after that, the price of Bitcoin starts to rise. So uh, in my opinion, I, I write it here. So they own Gemini Exchange. They are BTC millionaire billionaires. And I, my opinion, all right? I will also show you how I wrote it for you. So we can go through this. Like anyone holding an asset, they are biased and interested in pumping their backs. Such greed of people is rampant in, uh, in other domains like stocks. So this would be my opinion. If I buy something, uh, my own interest is to make it grow. Mm -hmm. So fundamentals are great, right? As we discussed before. But what they want is basically for people to invest in it so they can obviously get richer. Mm -hmm. I don't see into their heads. I have no idea whether they really believe in this technology or whether they want something good out of people using it. Who knows? Maybe it's just about money. Maybe not. Now, uh, when you have an asset, can anybody here or Honza, maybe you know, when I have an asset, can you explain? I'm sorry, but asset uh, doesn't say anything to me. It's okay, no problem. And Kirill, what about you? You know? Uh, I'm not too sure, so I'll. I don't no. know. So asset, something that uh, makes you money. Okay. <laughs> or something that is good for you. You have it. It can be even like, uh, let's say, uh, or let me explain it this way. We have asset and liability. I'm writing it into your chat. Okay, mm -hmm. now, asset is a good thing where, that you can make money from. It, it, it brings you some benefit into your life. It can be anything, okay? And then we have liability. And this is something that brings you some disadvantages to your life. Maybe you need to pay for it. Maybe you hate it or something. Let me give you some example. Because one thing, an asset can become liability or liability can become an asset. Let me show you how. For example, I have a house. Um, that I don't live in and I must pay a lot of money for just having the house. If nobody lives there, then it's a liability because <laughs> I have to pay every month. And if somebody moves into the house and they will pay me the rent, then it's an asset. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> it, it's mad, it's like Bitcoin is an asset. That's what I mean, because uh, obviously they made money from it and uh, it's positive for them. Okay, and now they hold an asset, they have Bitcoin, and they are biased. Anybody here, maybe Honza, you know? If I think the bias is like interested uh, as uh, like... Yes. Uh, so they, they, care, right? they care what happens to the price. They want it to go higher. So they want to pump it. They will hey, say, everyone, right? This is the future and so on. This does not happen only in blockchain and Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. This happens in stocks. This happens in real estate. This happens with gold everywhere, right? If I, if I put money into something, I want it to grow. And if you have any influence, if you are really rich, you want to spread the word and everybody to talk about it, all right? Especially if you have influence and you can really uh, talk in media and make yourself seen by everyone then your interest is to make it uh, it's like marketing you want to promote it basically so that would be my opinion to the first part of this question is it mass manipulation i don't know all right like maybe they would want to see something good with the future with uh, blockchain maybe they just want to make money maybe they are manipulators but what i do know for sure is that they are invested in this and they want it to be very uh, profitable and very successful. All right, that would be my opinion. Do you think that the current BTC pump will be the same as in early 2018? So it will drop to the same, uh, at the same point by over 60%. Uh, your op or somebody's opinion on it is that the twins manipulated the masses through media to make, okay, so if we, if we use this opinion, then they are not just the twins. They are also other people that uh, promote uh, Bitcoin like crazy. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So it will not be just them. It will be also other uh, billionaires, millionaires that want mm -hmm. to promote it, which is totally a possibility. Uh, I mean, sure. Yeah, I agree. So now uh, BTC Pump will be the same. Uh, okay, I think I wrote something here. BTC and Crypto Pump now will be unprecedented. Guys, can anybody explain this? Unprecedented? I don't know what it is. It's okay. If there is a precedent, that means there was something before like this. And if it's unprecedented, it will be unlike anything that we had before. Mm, okay. okay. It will be like new, new thing for us. So why am I saying this? Why this will be much bigger basically than what we had? Working products, they are running on ETH and BTC. All right. So wait, wait, wait. let me say it like this. They are already working products. So in 2017, everything was just promise. Everything was everything. Everything was new, and everybody came with promises. And they said, "Hey, I will prove. I will make this. I will make this product. I will sell it to people. This will be huge." So people were selling hope, nothing but hope. There was no program, no app. So why I believe that today it will be bigger because there is hope, and also there are products that are working today. I will show you some of these later. Then BTC is the hedge against inflation. A hedge is like uh, protection here, protection against inflation. Um, maybe Kirill, can you explain inflation? Uh, inflation is when a lot of like more of one currency is created, like when government uh, creates a lot more uh, dollars and the dollar uh, is dumping against uh, uh, the other currencies that aren't inflating so much. Exactly, exactly. So if I have, let's say, 1,000 check rounds today, uh, I can buy something with it, all right? Mm -hmm. Let's say I can buy 10 hamburgers, but next year I will be able to buy nine hamburgers mm -hmm. because they are printing money. Right? Yeah. And simply the salaries don't grow as quickly as the money that is printed, okay? Now, this is the second reason. So BTC will be the hedge against the inflation and monetary policies by the governments. They are ramped up by the government um, because of the coronavirus. So they want people to stay in their jobs and they are printing money and giving it to big corporations mostly uh, by keeping people employed. And of course, this will have a huge effect on the cash, right? on the money that we use every day. So when you look at BTC going up, it, it might not be because more people want to buy it. It might simply be that the cash is going down that the inflation is making the cash less valuable mm -hmm. right so let's say that you know bitcoin last year let's say it was ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars it would be as valuable as bitcoin today because simply the dollar is less valuable and people don't trust the dollar so much that mm -hmm. might that's that's another important side of the price that we need to look at it's not just about how many people want it and how many people offer it and sell it. It is also about uh, what's the value of the money we are using. That's also very important. Any questions, guys? Everything okay? Um, I understand everything, yeah. I, I hope so. Don't be shy. You can ask me, okay? I understand there are <laughs> difficult words and those are difficult I, ideas. Mm -hmm. I would uh, like to ask what, means, what the ramp up means. Yes. Ramp up means uh, to increase, to increase. Uh, we know the word increase, Honza, no? Uh, yes. Get higher, right? To yes. increase uh, quickly or drastically, I can say. All right? I see. Thank you. But, you know, it has a very like negative feeling to it if you ramp it up. It, it has a negative feeling. Okay? While increase quickly is okay, no, neutral. But ramp, to ramp something up, you increase something too fast, that it will have a bad effect on the econ economy or lives of people. Monetary policies, that's what the government does with the money, right? With the with money that we use. Now, by the government responses to the coronavirus, okay? There's more awareness. So the reason number, so number one, they are products running on ETH. They are working products. Number two, uh, monetary policies of the government. Number three, they are also, um, there's more awareness, more people know about it, more people speak about it than in 2017. And also there are mainstream companies like PayPal, 
they are they want to they, well they are already offering uh, cryptocurrencies greyhound capital it's a huge uh, institution with a lot of investors in it and they already offer this then there are banks that will also offer uh, you to hold cryptocurrency they will hold the key but uh, for a lot of people it's like a gateway they will begin like this because they don't understand it very much and they will trust the bank to do it for them now and they are they are coming in even more in big numbers than before that's why again this might be unprecedented but but let's go back to so that's my my answer to this All right it will be bigger than this much bigger i think bitcoin will go to one hundred thousand dollars at least and but it will drop that's the thing nothing goes up forever and it will likely drop a lot i have no idea by how much but it will very likely be higher than the last all-time high so the last all-time high that we haven't reached yet is twenty thousand dollars approximately so at the end of the this bubble when this bubble pops and it goes down again it will be higher than twenty thousand for sure like I would, I would say like 90%. That would be my opinion. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Any questions, guys? Everything okay? Uh, yes, everything okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Just good that you say something because uh, yeah. I, I use very difficult ideas here. So yeah, I was ju just getting my water. So I. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, let me show you this interesting thing here. Um, Winklevoss twins had video on Twitter yeah but I need to sh I, I need to use this one again so what they said uh, twin the Winkle was twins they said that um, Bitcoin is the only fixed asset in the galaxy now how do we asset we already know but how do we understand fixed can you tell me fixed is Fair. like it, it, it cannot be changed right I cannot uh, make more Bitcoin. If something is fixed, it doesn't move. It, it stays the way it is, okay? And why are they saying this? Because we know that there can only be 21 million Bitcoin, but also the Winklevoss twins believe that if Elon Musk decides to mine gold from asteroids, they're talking about the relationship between gold and uh, Bitcoin, it would plummet the value. Plummet, guys, do you know? Uh, right. pro probably it would uh, decrease. Yeah, and plummet like decrease very quickly. So we know ramp up, mm -hmm. and we know uh, plummet. The, the uh, you very difficult words I know, but it plummet the value of the precious metal, and highlights the Bitcoin's merits. Merits are like you know good things about this. So what they are saying is that gold cannot be or sorry gold can be found and there is a lot of gold in space what if we start mining gold on asteroids the price of gold will go down because there is more gold in the world but you cannot find bitcoin on asteroids there is always only 21 million bitcoin can i say something uh, i i read that what will happen when there is no uh Bitcoin left for miners uh, because there's only 21 million and the website said it would be like in 2000 and 100 and uh, they said that maybe uh, the society will print more Bitcoins for the miners. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so look, maybe the, the Bitcoin that will be totally mined you cannot uh, create new one there, but you can always start a new cryptocurrency. And if, let's say, there is some kind of agency that will allow people to trust it, then sure, why not? But um, it's, it's very difficult for me to imagine how this would be organized. Honestly, mm -hmm. I, I have no idea. In my opinion, like uh, Bitcoin will more and more become uh, an important asset. But by the time the last Bitcoin is mined, there will be no incentive. There will be no reason for other people to mine again. And the, then the network will simply collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's like 2140, I believe. Yeah. Long time ago. Well, we will not live by that time. <laughs> but yeah. it's for sure, it's a problem that must be dealt with. And I believe that maybe by, this, by that time, we will not care about it. 
There might be, you know, artificial intelligence or the encryption will be broken or something better will come up. Maybe you, you, think, no. you, th you think that hashing is possible to crack? Uh, probably, yeah. It can, it, if it can happen, it will probably be done by quantum computers or something. Okay. But Bitcoin will be the last thing we will worry about if that happens. Yeah, that's because, true. Um, the encryption is not only done by Bitcoin, it is also on the internet. We also encrypt information on the internet. So everything will become useless if uh, we have quantum computers that can decrypt everything. Yeah, so Bitcoin will be a bummer. It will be a horrible situation for Bitcoin, but basically for everyone in everything, for banks, you know, for everyone. Mm -hmm. All right, so. We will find out, but uh, uh, honestly, I don't know when, when or if quantum computers arrive. All right. So th these are some uh, sources for you to read. All right. Let's continue to another one. What do you think about Facebook's uh, fake cryptocurrency Libra? It looks like they are just making a new tool for making money, but I may be wrong. The thing why their cryptocurrency is fake is that this is not centralized. That this is not decentralized. It is 100% controlled by about 50 biggest online banks and money businesses. So what do you think? Okay, so I agree with you. Libra is fake in a way that it is controlled. It, they can always print more of of, uh, of the currency. Uh, so my opinion is here: blockchain is here to stay, and people will decide how it's going to be used. Blockchain is not going anywhere. Uh, it, it's going to be with us more and more in the coming years. My, my basically question is here, will people stay ignorant and they will be served an app with digitized fiat currency? Um, Kirill, can you explain fiat currency? Uh, fiat currencies are uh, the opposite of cryptocurrencies. It's uh, the fiat, fiat currency. It's the currencies that are controlled by some government. Yeah, yeah, basically, and they can be printed at will mm -hmm. and uh, where they don't know where they are using blockchain. So what I'm saying is this, is that blockchain will be here no matter what. The question is, are people going to use the decentralized blockchain or they will just uh, live from one day to another? They are not going to learn it. And then one day the government will come with digitized, um, digitalized cash that will simply tell them to use it. So uh, as I lived in China, they use WeChat over there and they use, uh, use it for sending money around, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the, the government fiat currency and they can freeze your account anytime. They can block it uh, if you become the enemy of the state. So mm -hmm. they will be simply running it on blockchain to make it more efficient. And uh, if people don't learn about this in time, they will be using blockchain anyway, but they will not know it because the application will look very simple. It will look like, you know, using a card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the same can be done in a decentralized way, but I'm afraid that uh, people are, most people are not going to jump on this in time and uh, it will simply not grow big enough to be considered, you know, um, a serious challenge to uh, the government apps, let's say. All right, that's, that's my opinion. Now, um, or are they going to use cryptocurrencies as they were meant to be? So cryptocurrencies were meant to be decentralized, not controlled by anyone. But of course, you can alter, you can change the code and make it more, more centralized. All right, I mean, why not? Majority of people are too comfortable, so I'm afraid it's the former option, in my opinion. But look, I want to be optimistic now. <laughs> I, would, I, I should be optimistic, but looking at this with the real, realist classes, I would say that majority of people will simply start using the, the apps that will come from uh, central banks. Yeah. That's my opinion, yeah. And one of it is Libra. Now, the thing is that Libra, centralized Libra would take too much power from other centralized players. So they stopped it quickly. They haven't stopped Bitcoin because they consider it still very small and it is small compared to gold, for example. Um, but Libra is quite big. They have a lot of uh, usage. They have a lot of users and usage around the world. And they would compete with the banks because uh, Facebook is not really a bank. It is a social network and, and a huge institution. That's why they stopped it early. And I don't think that Libra will be coming out anytime soon. 
if uh, Facebook should, is to control it. If Facebook wants to control it, they, they will not be able to release it. Yeah, they makes sense. To give it to the government. So they would have stopped cryptos if they could sue, right? They, they cannot really stop cryptocurrency, but I mean, they can uh, destroy the exchanges, right? Like Gemini, or they can destroy Binance. That, that can happen. Mm -hmm. Now, governments around the world are now racing to implement their own digital cash where the citizen would interact with the central bank directly. So there will be no national banks, like we know, you know, Komerční banka, right, Fio Bank, okay. and so on. It would just be the central bank in Europe, and you would have uh, like a direct connection to them using your, your cash app on a daily basis. Now, the thing is, their accounts can be frozen, erased, deflated or inflated at will, so that means they can uh, they can make you lose money every day. And this would make you feel like, oh my God, I have to spend, spend, spend. Okay? They can do it at will by the central bank whose management is not elected. This is a very important word here that we should discuss. They would not be elected, these people. All right? Elected, I think we know the word election, Honza. Can you explain electing someone? Uh, like a vote, if I'm not mistaken. That's it, yes. We just had uh, elections in the US and uh, these people in the management of those banks, they are not elected by anyone. Okay, so that's the that's maybe the issue here. Mm -hmm. You have more to read about it here. I left some sources. So you can read about the digital yuan in China and how it's different from the, the banks and the, the cash that we use today using banks, all right? And then here they compare also Bitcoin, uh, the digital UN and Libra, I think. So you can check these sources after our lesson, you can read. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions, guys? Everything okay? Did I answer your question? Yes. Uh, okay, great. Now let's go to another. Yes. Uh, thank you for this question. That was great. Now, have you ever seen the Silicon Valley TV series? If so, did you like it? Before this question, I had never seen any episode from this. I checked all the scenes from it regarding crypto and I had a great laugh. There's this guy, the rational, emotionless, geeky guy is hilarious. <laughs> yes, I had a great time watching uh, some of the scenes where he had the alarm for uh, giving him the instructions when the when the Bitcoin was too difficult. Yeah, yeah. That was very funny, yeah. that was great. Mm -hmm. And when he had some interviews for the TV, uh, that was also funny. Yeah, yeah, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's continue. So thank you for the tip. Now I have often heard that crypto is used by criminals or money laundering. Money laundering guys, can you explain? Uh, it's when you have uh, dirty money that you made from some illegal activity and yeah. you need to turn it into legal money that is somehow uh, linked to you, but not illegally. Excellent, good job. Now, here's my opinion on this. Uh, I hope that you don't mind that I'm reading it because I wanted to prepare uh, to organize my ideas, but also to make it easier for you to understand. Mm -hmm. Now, billions lost and stolen in embezzled funds. Embezzled is like when you steal by changing numbers somewhere, you steal it, you, you embezzle funds. Of Wirecard. Now, guys, this is important. I, why I begin with this is that, uh, let's, let's read it here. Uh, let's just read the title now. Uh, this is on CNN. Sorry, yeah, no. MasterCard and Visa, okay? So we use them every day. I believe you might have a debit card already. MasterCard and Visa are reportedly reconsidering their relationship with Wirecard following accounting scandal. So speaking of money laundering, uh, it is not something that is just in, uh, in cryptocurrency, okay? I don't see anybody um, really going uh, going you know up on the roof and screaming hey fiat is uh, used by money laundering and criminals mm -hmm. i i don't see that so in germany sorry CEO Mark so gentlemen you can read about this this is just some piece of news i wanted to share that mm -hmm. this this happens on the highest levels of uh, banks and even government and let me show you there's a second link there's a second link here and this one here, this is even worse. This is even worse. Now, uh, 
what? <laughs> I cannot even access it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know where the problem is. Okay, sorry. There we go. So uh, here, this happened maybe four months ago, and I did not see any like any news about this on TV at all. Now, five major banks exposed for moving trillions, trillions for mobsters. One coin. One coin is a cryptocurrency that scammed a lot of people. Mobsters are gangsters, is the same, and drug cartels. Five, uh, like moving trillions. So there are five major banks. Uh, I don't know which ones exactly. You can read it here. I, I forgot which. Yeah, here. New York, Mellon, JP Morgan, HSBC, Deutsche Bank. They all charter, they facilitated a number of sketchy financial transgressions. All right. Are, are you sure that this website isn't a fake news? Uh, it's not. It's not. You can, they, they are sources here. I, I checked it. And uh, they also used, they also talked about it on, um, foreign mainstream news, they talked about it. Okay. Yeah, the, trust me, this, this one is checked, yeah, but feel free to check it. If it's not real, then uh, please let me know, okay? Mm -hmm. It comes from this one, basically. They analyzed a lot of their financial transactions. You can imagine it's like uh, several tons of uh, documents. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I trying to say with this? I'm not saying that fiat is bad, blockchain is good. I'm saying that people are people and money is just a tool all right so what i'm saying here banks facilitate shady payments uh, mastercard visa embezzled funds so what i'm saying is that bitcoin is a tool or cryptocurrency is a tool like any other and it's up to people how they use it as we see it in the sources the dirtiest um practices i should finish it here are mainly happening in fiat if you look only at numbers of money they're like how much money is stolen, embezzled, you know, used for corruption. It is done in fiat, but you don't see any people going against fiat. Perhaps it's about people and not the tools. All right, that's the, that's the most important message that I want to tell you here. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are tools and people who are good, they are going to use it for good things. And the same goes for fiat. Just like when I have a gun, I'm a good person. I'm not going to shoot anyone if I'm not attacked. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. It's just a tool. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you agree or disagree here with my opinion? Well, I need to uh, read uh, for myself a oh, bit yeah, more yeah. to make up my opinion. Yeah, sure. That's a good. That's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, read on this. Uh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more sources that you can find about this. But again, this was not really much. It, it was just a very quick uh, piece of news a while back and you did not hear much about it afterward. All right. And yeah, it's also on Bloomberg. So Kirill, I also found, found uh, one on Bloomberg. This is basically mainstream news. I, again, sorry here. There, there are also uh, some, there's some information about it on Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is trustworthy enough. If you if you want to have mainstream sources, then two trillion two trillion dollars, mm -hmm. a lot of money, a lot of money. Okay, mm -hmm. and after that, you haven't heard about it again. So <laughs> it's really <Of> strange. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now, so why do people get scammed? Uh, can we explain get scammed, Hamza? Can you help us? Uh, like robbed. Yeah, Rob, very good. Okay, very good. So, but you do it voluntarily. You send the money and you know, you don't get anything back. All right. Or they will just do some trick to get money from you. So why do people get scammed? Now, why do you think people get scammed, guys? Can you give me an opinion? In, in crypto, because, I, in crypto. Because they are not cautious enough. Can be. Okay. Very good point. Phil, what would you say? Oh, oh, it's just another way to make money if you don't have any special skills. Yeah, yeah, but why do people like us, you know, like everyday people, why do they get scammed in crypto? Uh, oh, like this, uh, because they're probably not properly educated about uh, the um, scamming mm -hmm. business and uh, f uh, fake websites, phishing and... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Good point. Uh, so there might be viruses and you know, tricks and so on. Great. I think it's much easier than that. <laughs> but let me show you. So um, sending funds to the wrong address. Oh. All right. 
for example, you make a mistake somewhere uh, in the address number, you know, or you send it to the wrong account and your money, you should consider it lost. Basically. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the first thing. There is no bank to call to to reverse the transaction. So that's the thing. Tokens can be burned in a smart contract. So uh, I send money to a contract. The contract is buggy. There are some bugs and maybe I will lose my funds in a smart contract. Mm -hmm. Or the smart contract will get hacked, maybe. Okay, that's okay. another thing. There are scam ICOs. That's what you just said. That uh, people don't do enough research about new uh, companies that will offer coins for people to invest in. We call it ICO, initial coin offering. So instead of people, you know, asking for fiat currency, they will ask for, or sorry, they will they will not provide uh, stocks to people. Yeah. Right? They will not provide stocks, but they will give them a cryptocurrency that will represent their product or their, their company. And it's much easier and not regulated. So there were a lot of companies that came with a lot of promises, fake websites, and a lot of people send them a lot of money very early. They sold all their coins, they printed even more, and they scammed everyone who was holding the cryptocurrency. So there are scam ICOs even today still but it's not as bad as before with overhyped marketing. So there is a lot of marketing, uh, but no product from paid YouTubers or other exposure. Great examples are OneCoin or BitConnect. Guys, have you heard about BitConnect? It's so funny. Yeah, BitConnect. Yeah, exactly. So to this day, they inspire numerous funny memes, but mm -hmm. even their bizarre ceremony is a meme itself. Uh, yeah. I want to show you, it's so funny. Honza, have you heard about BitConnect? I did not. Yeah. Okay, okay. So have a look. And after watching this, tell me if you want to buy this. Yeah, when you finish watching this, let me let me know if you want to buy. So Honza, would you like to buy their coin? Uh, I think it's funny, yes, but I wouldn't buy the, their coin. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, a lot of people did. And a lot of people lost so much money on this. Uh, I can show you the graph. Wait, It happened maybe three years ago. I think that dude deserved the money he got from BitConnect for doing this. Oh, but actually, the, the presenter, he lost the money, too. He actually oh. believed it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, you, you can find videos with him explaining himself after this, because he's like the face of Bitcoin, you know? Mm. And basically, it was the graph. <laughs> there was the, like, the when I woke up one day, I remember seeing this. It was so crazy. So actually, you know, if you bought somewhere here and sold it on, on the way up, then why not? Huh? I mean... Mm -hmm. You could have still made money but most people actually got totally destroyed yeah and that's basically like in two days in two days so. so you see there are a lot of scams sometimes even the government closes uh they're like they they will see it as a scam and the government will close it you know the market will react and so on. all right now that's the, the the third reason the fourth reason is fomoing in fear of missing out uh, maybe you can explain, guys. Fear of missing out. FOMOing. FOMO. Uh, it, it's like that. Um, I can miss out on an opportunity to do or yes. make some money or something. Yeah. So yeah. I do something unrational. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when we check the the graph of Bitcoin, for example, a lot of people FOMOed in um, three years ago. So all of this here did happen in a very short time. 
this was maybe two weeks, maybe mm -hmm. even less. So they FOMO'd in, they bought it for 19,000. And then as it went down very quickly, because of course they bought it when it was so hyped and everybody was buying like crazy, then they were ho holding it all the way and then they sold it later, you know, mm -hmm. like for 9,000. Maybe if they wait long enough, they will be in profit. But I doubt that anybody from here is holding it. Very few people are holding who bought it here, I, I think. So they lost it by selling it later for a much worse price because they wanted to stop their losses and they panicked. They are controlled by their emotions. They see it rising. So they say, oh my God, I'm missing out. This will go even higher and they buy it. This is very difficult to control. And especially if you are new in this, uh, I myself, I, I also followed in a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. in, some, in some I lost, in some I waited long enough and I was in profit again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and in some, when I was very early in, the, in, in crypto, when I began, then I sold with uh, huge losses uh, and then it went up again. So that's yeah. like, you know, FOMOing, that's what you mean. <clears throat> so the price is at all time high, the whales pump and dump. So it goes up and down, up and down quickly. Mm -hmm. Especially this happens with little unknown projects. So one day you look and one coin is up 1000% and you say, oh my God, right? I want this. This is something. Mm -hmm. And people don't do research. There's more again to read, like some important scams that happened. You know, one of them is Bitcoin, but there are more. Okay. Any questions, guys? No, I have none. Oh my God. 43 yeah. minutes. We are. Yeah, making... You started with uh, cryptocurrency. I began early 2017, like uh, April, April 2017. Mm -hmm. Thank That's you. Like when I bought my first crypto, yeah. <clears throat> now, what if people make a mistake and send money to the wrong address? I already said it before, right? It's lost unless the good soul on the other end sends it back. So the only, your only way you can hope that the person will send it back to you because they will know that it's not theirs. Does it happen often? I doubt it now. No. In the case of stable coins, there's an interesting case. Uh, one guy, uh, w do you know anything about stable coins, Kiro, that you can tell us? Stable coin. Are you there, Kiro? Uh, okay, I guess not. Uh, Honza, can you hear me? It's okay? Yes, I can. Uh, all right, so let me show you one stable coin, which is the most important one. This one is always $1. It is connected to the dollar. If you look at the graph, all right, there are a few there are a few deviations, all right? But basically it's just one dollar. And this coin usually serves as kind of like uh, for trading so that you know uh, you can trade with uh, using dollar, but it's not dollar, it is a cryptocurrency, but it looks like a dollar. Oh, I see. So it's okay. like stable. You can trust That's it. That's why it's called stable, yes. Now it, it is not regulated and it is again controlled by some company that can print it as they like. That's how they keep uh, $1, right? Now, so cryptocurrency is packed. Uh, packed would be like that it's just one tether is $1. That's the idea. Tether is the most popular one. There has been a case where a man burned his coins in a smart contract by mistake. He sent coins to uh, some kind of um, smart contract you don't know what it is you did not go to the sec you did not you did not come to the second class uh, and it's kind of like a computer code where the money should act based on the code and uh, the crypto the contract was wrong he sent it to the wrong contract and the money was forever lost basically uh -huh. so his tokens were irre irreversibly lost now what he did he called the company the company behind tether minted new tokens for him when he contacted them and proved that the transaction was his. You cannot do this with Bitcoin. If you lose Bitcoin or any other crypto, you are you, you lost it and too bad. Nobody can make new Bitcoin for you to send it to you for your losses. But this can happen with stable coins. In that way, he they acted like central bank, although who really has a phone number for the central bankers if they burned their money by mistake. So imagine I burn my thousand crowns on this table here. I cannot call the central bank and ask them for 1,000, right? They, no. they are not going to print it for me. But this happened with the stable coins. It's very interesting, this thing that it happened. Uh, I have some articles here for this. 
In crypto, the safety and privacy is traded off by absolute personal responsibility. So in the cryptocurrency, you can be quite safe and it's very private. It cannot be censored. But on the other hand, uh, you are responsible for your money. If you lose it, if uh, you uh, give somebody information to your account, you are responsible. Nobody can help you. But only stable coins are a good exception. All right. That's nice. Quite nice. But I think most people don't want to be responsible like this. Most people, I think, want to have some kind of safety that if they make a mistake, that they know that they can it can be saved. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, some people will like it. Yeah. So keeping your private key safe and making sure you are sending transactions as intended, that is important, uh, so that you are sending to the right address and not to the wrong address. This can be quite nerve wracking. Uh, Hansa, maybe you can explain. Um, uh, like you are gaining more stress uh, from yeah, it? Exactly. So if you want to send money, let's say $1 million in one transaction on cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. it's very it makes you feel nervous because if you make a mistake somewhere, the money will be lost. All right? And there's nobody to stop you doing making the mistake. So that's the thing. All right? Now... It can be recovered only with stable coins. There's no other way. Uh, Honza, do you have enough time? Because it's 48 minutes. We are maybe halfway through. I can stay like for 10 minutes. At it's OK. 10. I will finish it on my own then. It's OK. OK. I, I, I'm sorry, time. but I have work to do and I don't want to miss. Don't worry. I understand you're at school. And this is the voluntary voluntary lesson. That's OK. Thank, thank you for the lesson and goodbye. Good luck. You're going? already yes i need to go <laughs> okay no problem so take care i will finish the video on my own and feel free to uh, watch it later on the okay YouTube. thank you Goodbye. take care it was a, it was a pleasure to have you here it was a pleasure to do. okay so now let me continue on my own uh now can governments ban it because it threatens their control over money or can they perhaps use it for their own benefit as we said before uh the government um we talked about it here before. Um, now I forgot it. Yeah, we, we talked about the digital currency that uh, it, it will not be banned by strictly destroying the, the exchanges. It might be banned by the ways of uh, providing the only alternative for using it by giving people the access to government issued applications. So let me look at the opinion here. They cannot really ban a code. It's just a piece of computer code that cannot be banned. So there is no address, no person that you can lock down. Uh, then they can hit, they could hit exchanges, but decentralized exchanges are becoming very prevalent now. So more and more the exchanges and marketplaces are running on a code. And again, you cannot destroy a code. A code lives on its own on the internet. And the only way to do it would be to basically uh, shut down the internet all over the world. So with the way that the trends are going, decentralized exchanges will take over very likely. Now, so what can they do instead? Their best shot is making their own centralized and controlled version of cryptocurrency quickly, which they will eventually push to people who wouldn't know they are using blockchain. So as we said before, People would be using different apps and they wouldn't even know that they are using blockchain, that it's running on the same technology. But this way, they will be just like with a stable coin, Tether, that we discussed just before. They would be able to run the printers as they like and uh, print, inflate, deflate, freeze, and so on. So now the central banks would then have more control over people as they would inflate, freeze, erase accounts of people at will. The actual cryptocurrency may be offered by the government selling their own issued token that would be packed to Bitcoin and interchangeable for the real Bitcoin or other crypto. That's very important too. So the government can actually become like a broker that would uh, offer people to buy cryptocurrency, but they would not really sell the cryptocurrency itself, the Bitcoin itself. They would actually sell... Uh, a token that would represent Bitcoin or represent Ethereum. And uh, they would sell it to people and they would tell them, okay, it is interchangeable 
for the real Bitcoin or for other crypto, but it would it wouldn't be. Uh, welcome back. Are you here? Uh, yeah. Sorry, my my Wi-Fi went out again. I I, okay. I was like really. <laughs> it's okay. Honza has left, uh, so I was just now speaking to myself. I'm talking about sorry. whether governments can ban it or control it. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that, uh, as I was saying, that decentralized exchanges are becoming very prevalent. Prevalent is like uh, very common, very common. Mm -hmm. So you cannot really ban a computer code, but you could, so you cannot ban a code. That's the thing. But their best shot would be uh, making their own centralized and controlled version. Like Libra. Of, oh, yeah, like Libra, for example. Mm -hmm. And they would push it to people who would be using it. And then uh, another thing that I was thinking about when it comes to this is that the, the governments are going to issue their own token and they would uh, peg it to Bitcoin. So that means they would give you a different cryptocurrency that they will control, but you, they will tell you that you can always change it for the real Bitcoin if you come to some place. It would be just like, you know, um, cash before. Before uh, cash was bagged by gold, you could come to the bank with the cash and they would give you gold. Today, so like yeah. cash backed by Bitcoin? Yeah, kind of. Oh. You, 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 more like you would buy cryptocurrency that would be backed by Bitcoin. Wow. But the question is, would they really give you Bitcoin if you came to a bank with this? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, that's the question. Yeah. So that's why I put it here in the brackets. Like mm -hmm. it would be on paper, but reality can be that if a lot of people came at the same moment to get the Bitcoin, mm -hmm. maybe they would not have enough because they would be giving people tokens for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like they are just like fiat money today. Yeah, just now. Yeah. So now here's the thing. This would of course work just like when cash was backed by gold until seventy one. Mm -hmm. And you having the paper, not gold. It's the same thing. You would just get the token. They would say, okay, you can always change it for Bitcoin or other crypto if you come here, right? But what if they don't, right? What can you do? There's, yeah, no, way to, there's no way to be safe from this. Mm -hmm. Speaking of gold, yeah. Uh, the American government confiscated gold in 1933. I like that it was illegal to have gold? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. So I'm saying basically, yeah, here, uh, this. And also uh, one piece of news came out just today uh, that I want to show you. But let me start here with this one. So in 1933, there was the, the economic depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the, the cash was worthless, right? And the only way to protect yourself was from gold. So there, there was executive order 6102. And the government wanted to uh, get all the gold it could for itself. So that you see, we will talk about gold soon as well, but this is just the beginning here. The limitation on gold ownership, all right? It was revealed later, but uh, just like when you had prohib prohibition on alcohol, there was prohibition on gold. People like trying to be safe from the policies of the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very important thing. Not many people know that. They, they believe, okay, I'll buy gold, I'll put it into bank, and I'll be safe. Right? Mm -hmm. Somebody's still holding it for you. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there are more articles here. I don't. I will not go to every single yeah. article, but I want to show you this one. Uh, by the way, Carol, if you need to go, it's okay. I will speak on my. No, own. no, no. I have, this video I have will be probably for two hours. It will be one more hour from now. I think. I'm absolutely okay. I'm very interested in this topic. And ah, okay, that's yeah. good. Even if I inspire one student, it's uh, good enough for me. Okay. And, as you see, I'm very passionate about this, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I hope in you're this. in yeah. every blockchain <laughs> lesson, you're smile smiling at the start. It's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I smile with the English lessons too. Come on, it's not just it's just not blockchain. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. in a blockchain lesson, it's. <laughs> I get it. I, I get it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Now, these police have seized 4.2 billion cryptos from Plus Token Ponzi crackdown. Now, the the question is, I have no idea about Plus Token. Was it really a Ponzi? Uh, you know, like the pyramid scheme. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. All right, something happened in China where. The, the police seized a lot of cryptos mm -hmm. and they did not seize the that, uh, that plus token. They seized uh, Bitcoin, they, they write it here, 
they seized uh, 200,000 Bitcoin, more or less, almost 1 million ETH. Wow. I, I believe that those are all the cryptos that people send them for this scammed uh, plus token, mm -hmm. right? So now the question is, what are they going to do with it? Now they can dump it on the market. Maybe they can keep it as an investment. Maybe it's burned. Maybe they did not get the private keys. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult thing to, to say. So pe people buy this uh, plus tokens uh, Ponzi scheme for crypto? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the easiest way I can imagine. Okay. So, so they bought it using uh, these cryptos. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, that that just came out today, actually. I, I wanted to, or yeah, twenty seventh today. So that's why yeah. I wanted to include it because mm -hmm. uh, that also comes back to banning cryptos, right? They can mm -hmm. find some Ponzi's, and those are like real people who are running it and mm -hmm. offering some coin. But for example, Bitcoin, there's it's just the code. Yeah, there's no Ethereum. Or Ethereum, it's just the code. Uh, there's it's very decentralized. Is the mm -hmm. thing. But some cryptocurrencies are not even the ones that are like on the normal market. Mm -hmm. Now, um, also, I wanted to show you one more thing. Uh, this one here, just very very briefly. Um, actually, the the U.S. government has used crypto to send money to Venezuela. It's quite interesting. How much? Uh, I have no idea. Probably millions. I have heard that like a year ago, there was a $7 billion uh, dollar transfer in Bitcoin or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that happened. Basically, what happened uh, is that... Sorry? Hello? Yeah, that was, my, uh, that was my parent. It's okay now. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. Now, U.S. government to use USDC, that's basically the stable coin. It's uh, one coin, one dollar, to bypass Venezuela's Maduro. Mm -hmm. And even the U.S. government uh, are using cryptocurrency to uh, avoid other governments. You see? Mm -hmm. like, like, it's very interesting. They, they see him as a dictator uh, who is suppressing people. I'm not here, here to talk about politics, right? That's just what they believe. But uh, they are using the USDC to send money to Venezuela because the, the government would seize it, they would take it, right? Yeah. So it's interesting that even other governments are using crypto for their own benefit, like, mm -hmm. right? For the same reason that, uh, you know, you and I want to use it. But what did, what did they use it for, Joy? I can imagine they tried to, um, yeah, the US recognizes Juan Guaido, not Nicolas Maduro. They wanted mm -hmm. to support some kind of opposition against him. So yeah, Maduro has blocked the exiled government. Yeah, yeah that, that happened like two years ago. They had some, uh, they had some kind of election, I think. And um, there's again like uh, big governments trying to push the opposition, and the other governments yeah. trying to push Maduro. It's just a huge geopolitics, you know. Yeah, yeah, they really love to do that, and that, then they have control of the of the countries. Yeah. Yeah. So now Circle is helping uh, route these funds to Venezuela, Venezuelan health workers. Now, this is on paper. Who knows where the money goes? Like in the end, who knows who is getting the money? It might even be some kind of guerrilla fighters going to fight uh, against him using weapons. Yeah, yeah. That's... Who knows? Like nobody knows. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Is there much danger of hash rate getting centralized by a few key players? Very good question. Now, when it comes to small cryptos running their own chain, yes. For example, I think you can do it with uh, Ethereum Classic, or you could do it maybe even with Nimic that we used uh, last mm -hmm. video. It could happen there. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to established projects such as Bitcoin or Ethereum, Ethereum will stop you. Uh, yeah, I will explain it soon. So when it comes to established projects, very unlikely because uh, even though the major hash, hash rate is in, of Bitcoin is in China, mm -hmm. they are not really centralized. Like they are not acting on their own, mm -hmm. right? They, they are like still separate. There's no way to really organize it in one way, I think. Now the most and quite considerable amount of hash rate of Bitcoin is in China, but those miners are grouped in one pool. So mm -hmm. they don't really mine together as one entity. They are simply pooled together and they are using their computer power. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't exactly. mean that they, they don't act together, if you understand. Yeah. Uh, they are not organized as one entity. 
The question is whether such a thing can be achieved should the Chinese government take over them. That's a question, yes. Now, mm -hmm. we saw that the Chinese government took over uh, the Ponzi, the, the PLUS token. What if they take over all the miners? What if they find them? And then maybe they will be running it centrally. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the end, why would they do that? They would destroy Bitcoin and the uh, hope in Bitcoin. And if they are holding a lot of Bitcoin themselves, then they would kind of destroy their own investment. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Again, like, I cannot like see the reason why anybody would try to destroy it this way, because uh, they would not have to be invested in it. If you are invested in it, you know, you don't want to do it. Or well, maybe if they want uh, like the world to st stay centralized as it is now, they would like to b destroy Bitcoin. Might be, yeah. Uh, might be. I'm thinking about it that um, they might actually, you know, if I look at it through Chinese eyes, they might see it as a good way to fight the dollar by promoting Bitcoin. And mm, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. but as an alternative, you know, like a global alternative for currencies. But mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. So anyway, it is very unlikely that, for example, Bitcoin would be or Ethereum would be taken over. Yeah, it's too good of a technology to destroy. Yeah, it's already too big for even like the people who want to destroy it would be going against themselves. In a way. Yeah. Now, Ethereum will soon stop using POW anyway, proof of work. We talked about mm -hmm. it before. Yeah. Uh, Carol, have you heard of proof of stake? Uh, I have heard that some new, wait, isn't it Nimic that is using proof of state? Uh, no, no, Nimic is still on proof of work, I think, but it, they are planning to go on proof of stake. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, but so we, mean... we know that proof of work is about mining and about spending mm -hmm. electricity uh, on finding the correct nonce and mm -hmm. uh, extending the blockchain. Mm -hmm. The way it is done in proof of stake in a very simplistic way. I will just explain very simply. Um, it's done by the, by the way that uh, when you hold the coins, you lock them uh, so that you cannot use them. And you will be the validator of, uh, of the new transactions by risking your funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now many people go against the proof of stake because uh, they believe that it's more centralized, that the people, mm -hmm. you know, who yeah. will have the most coins, they will be the validators of the most transactions and maybe uh, they can do the 51% mm -hmm. attack. So, so is d uh, the Dash cryptocurrency on proof of stake? Dash? I, I don't know much about Dash, honestly. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, know, I know what it is. I know that they, uh, they, they always talk about being fast, but I would not be surprised if they are proof of stake. I have heard that they have like a system of people who have the most Dash have the most votes or something or I'm yeah, not sure that, that would make sense that would yeah. make sense that would be proof of stake and uh, I know that ethereum is going to run on this mm -hmm. they are it will happen in a year probably we'll, but we will mm -hmm. see so that's my idea here uh, you can again read about this so mm -hmm. why chinese miners one stage of 51 per sec 51 percent attack on bitcoin you can read about mm -hmm. it here Mm -hmm. uh, this one, what what fifty one percent attack is? You can mm -hmm. read about it here. Now, proof of work algorithm consumes so much electricity. Are there any better ways? Is it worth running it? So let's have a look. I would say it's very efficient, and lots of power can get lost on the grids just moving electricity around. Mm -hmm. It is not like you know uh, that you produce electricity and you send it to people's homes. A lot of electricity gets lost anyway. All right. Yeah. So especially power plants can use their extra power to mine. So when you send the power somewhere, the uh, the amount of power that would be lost on the way can be used to mine. And uh, there are already yeah. cases when you know nuclear power plants are mining already. In, oh really? Uh, yeah, I forgot where though. <laughs> let, let me find oh. it. I haven't put it into. Like they are not. That's not the main reason they are running. But the extra power they make, rather than losing it, they are mi mining it. Yeah, nuclear power plants mining Bitcoin. Let's see. Ukraine. Yeah, Ukraine considers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but the, they just consider. They are not saying that they are doing. Could be one of the best ways to take advantage of a current energy glut. They have. If you have more electricity, right, that you produce then why not using it to mine it? All right, but so the thing. 
Mm -hmm. wouldn't the electricity be lost one way or another because it must be transferred to people's homes? Yeah, it would. That's the whole point. Yeah. Uh -huh. so okay. Rather than, you know, having extra electricity and losing it on the way somewhere, mm -hmm. like you cannot store it easily, you know, then it's better to use it for, for something useful. No. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying with this is that the amount of energy produced and consumed defines the degree of modern civilization. Mm -hmm. okay. the more the more electricity we produce and consume the, the more developed we are all right mm -hmm. yeah. i mean some people might go against it you know saying that it's wrong but i'm basically saying if you want to live in a modern world then mm -hmm. we produce we produce and consume more electricity that's the idea mm -hmm. it's also like not like the legacy financial systems uh, run ecologically so mm -hmm. what I'm saying here is that banks and uh, the, the institutions that we use today, uh, it's also uh, consuming so much electricity, mm -hmm. right? It's the same thing. So here is another thing we, we have just discussed, proof of stake. So it consumes little electricity. And in short, validators in this algorithm are members who lock up their funds. There are fears of centralization under this uh, algorithm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're unfounded. Unfounded, like, you know, uh, whether they will be for real or not. Mm -hmm. right? I, I don't know. I'm not such an expert on, on these uh, details. And then sources with different points of view uh, below. So I have put some articles here that are good for proof of work and that they say that it's great. And the others who say who is, that it's terrible. So mm -hmm. you can read the different views. Okay. Right? So you can have it here. Bitcoin hasn't seen much adoption and it's volatile price cannot make it money. What's your opinion? Volatile, can you explain to me, please? Uh, that is not stable. It goes up and down very uh, how much. How yeah, up and down quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it changes a lot. And there's not much adoption. So adoption and volatile price, important here. So what I would say, absolutely true. Small everyday transactions aren't a really a good idea on the BTC blockchain. And BTC is also rather deflationary. Do you understand deflationary? Can you explain it to me? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, so I will explain it like this. People have no incentive to spend it because it's very rare. Oh, yeah. Well, the see? opposite to inflation. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there, are, there are fewer and fewer Bitcoin created. Mm -hmm. And you are asking yourself, okay, I have cash here in front of me or I can use my, my Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to use? The, the, the cash that is losing value every day, that you're going to keep the cash or are you going to keep Bitcoin, right? So yeah. that, that's the thing. That's why it cannot be everyday money. Mm -hmm. You can easily make stable coins and then you change you know, Bitcoin to stable coins and uh, use it, right? Why not? Um, but again, as long as they're cash, you know, there's not much reason. So mm -hmm. people might use it as you know, uh, protection, as we said before protection, protest, um, kind of like investment in that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Where the real revolution is, is Ethereum, in my opinion, because you can uh, you can uh, program money. That's what matters. You know, Bitcoin, like sending money from A to B, it's kind of boring, honestly, all right? It's not, it's not good enough. So if there was only Bitcoin, we would not be having this discussion today, I think. Yeah, probably not. Now, uh, what if the internet stops working? Can you still transact? Very good question. Now, the way to connect to the nodes is done 99.999% uh, through the internet. So almost always you are going to use the internet. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically always, yeah, when you, when you want to do it. So if there was a power outage or the internet stopped working, you wouldn't, of course, lose anything. It would still be on the blockchain uh, on a different copy somewhere else in the world. You would not have to worry about it, but you would not be able to transact. Mm -hmm. right? If uh, there's power outage, no electricity, then uh, yeah, too bad, of course. Now, as long as there's one recent copy of the blockchain in the world and the person shares it, the blockchain cannot die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only way that you know you can kill blockchain might be if there was some kind of solar flare and mm -hmm. uh, all the machines would die in the world, like yeah, well, some kind of like EMP. I bet that Bitcoin wouldn't matter at that time anymore. Yes, 
Yes, pretty much. That's the whole point. Exactly. Good. So the reason is isn't isn't uh, yeah. Before we continue, uh, yeah, I did not. Yeah, that's the exactly here. Transactions for the vast majority of those affected. If this happened, Kirill, exactly. Therefore, out of the question, because in the case of some major crisis like mm -hmm. solar flare or power outage, Bitcoin, I think, will be the last thing you care about. Because, <laughs> yeah. Now, the reason I said that it's not 100% is that there are satellites around the world that are mm -hmm. running nodes too. Oh, really? And, yes. It's mind blowing, I know. Uh, oh. Now, and they, you can connect to them directly. So you don't have to use the internet and you can connect using your satellite dish. You, you know, you catch the signal from the satellite and you can send it through the satellite. Mm -hmm. so I'm not sure how that process works and how costly it could be, but it's definitely possible to connect to them and transact with your portable satellite dish and a solar panel. If you want wow, to be crazy, cool. you could do this. Let me show you how. So uh, Blockstream, it's called Blockstream. And it seems like it's some kind of uh, private company that uh, launched, I think, four satellites. No internet required, okay? But the thing is, they only do it with with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Like I wish they had some other cryptos on it too. That they I were imagine a guy in a apocalyptic, uh, post apocalyptic world with a satellite sending Bitcoin to someone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like. <laughs> like. You know, imagine this. Yeah. Imagine it uh, that there's no electricity. Everybody's killing each other, and then you would like, hey, wait, guys, I will send you some Bitcoin, right? Give yeah. me a request. You would bring it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All right, good. So here they will also explain how it works. And there's more about it. But generally, no, uh, basically no internet, no, no blockchain. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say I'm new to this. Where can I go and start investing? The easiest ways for newbies would be to connect your debit cards on Coinbase or Binance. Mm -hmm. You can change fiat into crypto or the other way around in this. But you pay a lot of fees. You know, yeah, yeah. There, there are there are better ways, but this is the easiest way. Now, mm -hmm. you also provide relative simple to use centralized exchanges. You have already told me that you use Binance, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I made two dollars and then I lost everything tonight. How come you lost? What do you mean you lost everything? Like I invested in XRP when it was at seventy cents, and uh, then in yeah, one night okay. it dumped to fifty cents, and I was on a market. <laughs> I was on a margin trade, so they liquidated my. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my God! I, I lost only like. This is your uh, first time doing this, and you use margin trade now. Huh? Yeah. Well, I as you can see, I'm a real newbie. Yeah, and you FOMO'd in. Yeah, like. I I know I know. Wait, XRP. I just I was watching it a while back now. Because XRP in one week, in one week it jumped the, yeah. the most, right? It like the three hundred percent. That's why I was like very hyped about making some yeah. extra money. But then, <laughs> that's what we call FOMO. Yeah, so yeah. you you FOMO in. Yeah, that's the yeah. problem. And well, I learned something. Yeah, exactly. You have to learn this way. I also learned the hard way as well. There's no other way. You have to learn from your own mistakes and uh, buy when you see, for example, something like this, minus 84%, then you buy. And when you see this, you know, plus 20,000%, you don't buy. If that happened in one day, let's say, you know, just for fun. Okay. So, not a, yeah, not the best idea now. So, uh, I highly recommend keeping your crypto on the wallet where you own private keys where you, when you are done with trading. If you keep your crypto on an exchange, there can be a little problem because you don't really own that crypto. You are relying on a centralized entity. And the, what, the, what can happen, they can be unexpectedly shut by the government, for example, or they can be hacked. Okay, now there is a good example here. So I should make a, 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 an official Bitcoin wa wallet and get yes. some Bitcoin there? Yes, simply any wallet anywhere, as long as you have the private keys, you should have the private. You don't have the private keys for the your Binance wallet. You don't. Yeah, I don't. I you don't. have your account, right? That's it. You just have the public key. That's it. Because the thing is that Binance has only uh, one private key. They have one address for mm -hmm. everyone, mm -hmm. and they basically just uh, use it to uh, 
allocate the resources for everyone. They will say, okay, you have this many Bitcoin, but they yeah. all share the same address basically. Mm -hmm. All right, it's, or maybe a few addresses, you know, like five mm -hmm. or 10. Yeah. Now, what happened with OKX? There was some huge scandal a while back. They froze all the withdrawals. You could not take your money out of this exchange. Yeah. All right, yeah. and it happened uh, on October 16th. And now they are promising, they, they resuming, right? Next week, mm -hmm. but it's a promise. Oh, right? yeah. who, knows? who knows what happens? Maybe if that happened to me, I, I would consider it lost. Mm -hmm. you know, and there's no way to get help. You cannot you know, go to court or you will not get any help. So simply consider it lost. That's why, that's why you need to keep it somewhere where you have the private key. And also that's why I recommend when you get in the grips, that's like, you know, when you learn, mm -hmm. when you learn the basics, it's time to learn how to use decentralized exchanges. Mm -hmm. Because these exchanges, they don't hold any funds and they cannot be hacked. Mm -hmm. If the code is correct, okay, they, mm -hmm. there can be bugs. Yeah. Uh, but they, they are audited. And uh, mm -hmm. if they are audited well and there are no bugs, it's 100% secure. Mm -hmm. and there is nobody holding your funds because you still hold the private key. When you yeah. operate on the decentralized exchange, you don't give anybody your private key and you are still using your wallet. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you, re can you recommend some wallets that I could use? We will get there. Yeah, we'll okay. get there. Yeah, soon, don't worry. Now, which programming languages should I focus on if I want to become a blockchain developer? Which sources should I use? So programming languages for the web one, web two, web three. Now, web one, do you remember the languages? Uh, we talked about it last week, in the, or the first week, yeah, two weeks ago. It's okay if you don't remember. I don't remember, actually. It's okay. Let me show you on the, on the presentation. Or maybe you were not present, I'm not sure. For uh, I, I was present, but I maybe, maybe it just wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you had to leave some, you know, earlier, a little bit earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that was cool. the second video. The second video, yeah. Mm -hmm. So web one. Okay, uh -huh. web one, HTML and CSS. I believe that you study it now at school, no? Uh, we will study, but not yet. Okay, that's pretty easy. This one. Yeah, that's yeah. Very easy, I would say. Mm -hmm. This is where the problem starts for me personally. I'm not such a good. I'm not so good at coding. With mm -hmm. JavaScript, with this you can code whatever, what, yeah, I know. whatever you want. You know? There are frameworks for e absolutely everything. Yes. And the last one here, Web3, Solidity. So mm -hmm. everything is running today, like 99% nine, of all good products are running on Ethereum. So mm -hmm. that's why I say Solidity. But there are other, there are other programming languages too, mm -hmm. such as um, uh, um, C++, of course. Yeah, yeah. So that, that will be helpful. Even Bitcoin is written in C++. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Wiper is also a new language that will come to Ethereum soon. But the thing is, because it's decentralized, there will be nobody to really enforce it. So they will say, guys, please use Wiper. But I think that for the next 10 years, Solidity will be still number one. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. Solidity still go for this. Mm -hmm. I think Wiper might be simply more complex. Solidity mm -hmm. and Solidity is just like JavaScript, but it's just uh, you you get more commands for dealing with money and blockchain. So it's like a JavaScript framework. Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very similar. Okay. I, I can show you some of my codes. Right. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I have, I still have some here saved. I hope. Mm -hmm. Um. I will show you like some differences there if it loads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the time uh, it takes. No, no, it's okay. But, so you just get the idea. You know, here I was learning, you know, one, two, three, the drugs, yeah. variables. So for example, uh, here, here you have string, right? Mm -hmm. It's like in a C++ string public message, hello world. Yeah. Right? So what you see here was the difference. String is just like in, uh, in C++. Mm -hmm. public that's a big difference that means it's like viewable on in the contract you can see oh, yeah right? so it's like in a function that uh, if it's in a function you can't access it and this you can access yes. with any function yeah basically the, the question is who can call this function 
yeah for everyone or is it just for me you know mm -hmm. like uh, is it for the owner of the contract or for everyone and then here we have um, uh, this is, this would be an array you know i yeah, yeah. forgot myself so like one you have the same thing in javascript it's just you're yeah, yeah. using you are using different uh, commands but mm -hmm. the logic is the same logic mm -hmm. is the same so it's okay. okay and then you you run it on the blockchain so like you you deploy the contract here you can try it here with some you know fake ethereum and you will see yeah. how your contract works it's very interesting but very difficult yeah i don't think that's for me yeah. anymore well only some geniuses like vitalik buterin can do this <laughs> yeah but i think that if you start now you can you, you can do it yeah, i hope so. i'm not doing it because you know i spent uh, years and years of studying languages you know like, yeah like everyday languages uh -huh. I, I started coding maybe six months ago so it's like, oh really uh-huh yeah, yeah i i learned some of it on my own mm. but i'm not good at this I, I cannot you know have a job with this for sure yeah i understand but i can i can educate people in this at least that's good mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> now why should one become a blockchain developer can you give me a reason why you would do that oh well, one? because it's a trend now as you told us in some lesson that it's very like um trendy to be a blockchain developer Mm -hmm. And it's going to be even trendier, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say, if you already work in IT, which probably you will, mm -hmm. uh, why not learning specific fields in it that not so many people know yet? Yeah, that's... Why awesome. not specialize yourself uh, if you can, right, in IT? Now, since not so many people have this skill yet, you can make a bank out of it. Mm -hmm. All right. So like myself, like create an online... Uh, uh, no, that's an expression, Akiro. It's like uh, you make a lot of money. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I thought I it like typical English here. Yeah. I thought like making my own Binance or something. <laughs> no, well, but technically, yeah, you are making a bank. If you make a smart contract, you mm -hmm. are creating a banking service, basically. Yeah. Oh. Decentralized. So in a way, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, you can improve lives of people by giving them agency and sovereignty over their money, privacy, and lives. That what is sovereignty? Uh, so yeah. Sovereignty. Uh, to be sovereign means that you decide for yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. Like our country is, maybe some people say we are not sovereign, but if we are sovereign, then we have our own decision makers. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, our government and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. And right now you're a teenager, so you have no sovereignty in life. Like you have some, but not complete sovereignty. Mm -hmm. right? You still have parents that you listen to and yeah. you do as they say, you know, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now, where to learn more about investing in crypto, into crypto that's important for you, in, into cryptocurrency, such as different investment strategies. So, they are Ivan on Tech Academy. They have courses. You can learn some there, but it's paid. You have to pay, unfortunately. Otherwise, I suggest articles online, such as Investopedia. I left some articles here. You can especially learn uh, technical and fundamental analysis. Yeah. Technical is when you learn the technology. Uh -huh. Technical is when you learn how to read the, the graphs, how to read the numbers. Yeah. When you do the technical analysis for blockchain, you should also learn the on-chain analysis. I left articles there for you. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm not going to discuss it here. Right? Yeah. Those are important terms that you, you can find and mm -hmm. learn on your own. Gold or Bitcoin? What would you say about gold and Bitcoin, Kiro? What would you invest in? Uh, well, if I had money, I would probably now invest in gold because I, I'm not sure about Bitcoin because it's pretty high now and it can like drop by a, bu a bunch now. Yeah, that's true. I'm not sure. So you don't want to FOMO, right? Yeah. How is the graph of gold? Yeah, I, I know that it's also very volatile, but I'm, yes, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's as volatile as Bitcoin, like in short term. Okay, yeah, very good point. Uh, let's see just what we find. I hope that you have enough time. It is maybe half an hour more. Yeah, I have the whole day, so oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Okay, so this this one will be probably per ounce. Yeah, OZ, so per mm -hmm. ounce. Okay, I see. Now, um, it also can drop very quickly, as we said. Oh, yeah, I see. Two years, in the last two years. Uh, 
but I mean, yeah, in the last two years, it's pretty good. It, mm -hmm. It's pretty good. But it could also go the other way around. Mm -hmm. Oh, it can always go like this, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, the way that the cash works, it, it will not go down the way that you would lose uh, more money. Even if you sell it for um, less, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you will sell it for more money, but you will still be able to buy the same things with it. Yeah. yeah. This, you know? mm -hmm. Anyway, here's my opinion on this. Now, I think there's a generational gap, like generations of like young people and old people between mm -hmm. gold and Bitcoin. Sort of like the old world versus the new world. Mm -hmm. Both have their place in the world now, but in the future, I'm definitely in favor of BTC myself. Mm -hmm. I will give you the reasons why. Mm -hmm. Gold can be fake and it is not easily verifiable. So mm -hmm. if I give you a gold bar in front of you and you don't know much about gold, how do you know it's real? Uh, right? I should take it to a, special, to a specialist. Yes. Because and do you want to do that? Eyes. I would like to know right now, right? If I send yeah. Bitcoin, you know you have Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. you can always see it and verify it yourself. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm just giving you like, uh, I'm not saying that gold is bad, of course not. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying like, this is how I think young people will look at this. They will say like, why should I buy gold? I cannot move it around, mm -hmm. right? How do I know it's real gold? I should go oh, somewhere yeah. and pay mm -hmm. some guy. I should pay some guy to tell me if it's real, like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's how I think about it. You, you pay know? a lot for just to get gold. Yeah, exactly. Now, the reason I'm saying this, okay? Let's go to Bloomberg again. Just a while back, there were, you know, this here is very interesting. Yeah. There was a huge scandal coming from China. And again, it was hush hush, you know, they, they said it and then nobody talked about it. Uh -huh. Chinese jeweler, jeweler probed for using fake gold bars for loans. Mm -hmm. And it's in Wuhan, uh, quite interesting too. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I have to pay for this. Uh, okay, so there's another one. And basically they found 83 tons of gold in China mm -hmm. that they used to back their loan. So they gave money to someone and they backed it by gold. Uh -huh. But the gold was fake. And it was fake. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Now this cannot happen with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. for example. All right. Um, that's the thing. So that's my first uh, problem with gold. The second <laughs> problem is that there is no fixed supply. Yeah. So, as we said with Winklevoss twins, they can uh, always find more on Earth or even on asteroids. So yeah, yeah. That's the problem. The second. That's true. Gold cannot be moved around easily. So imagine, especially across borders, right? So yeah. imagine I want to, uh, I have one million dollars in gold. This would be like, let's say, two gold bars, you know, big gold bars. Mm -hmm. I would put them into my bag and imagine I go through the airport with this. <laughs> yeah, well, like, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't go really far. Yeah, exactly. All right. Th that's another problem. Like moving it around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not a very good idea. Now, gold in larger quantities must be held by the third party, which can always refuse to give it back. There we go. Mm -hmm. So actually, this happened to Venezuela. I forgot to include uh, an article here. Uh, when there was this huge uh, international scandal with them two years ago, they wanted to get their gold back from some British bank, and they refused to give them the gold. All right, it was their gold. They paid for it. It was their gold, but it was held by a foreign entity. You know, even if it was held by by your own country, it is still held by someone. Right? And you don't want to have it at home. Like having gold at home, not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. That's my problem here. You, there are sources to read. Then again, there are great things about gold. Like it's offline, right? That, uh, that's the great thing. No. Uh, sorry, I need to go for a minute. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, yeah sure. I will then. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. So uh, before you come back, let me have a look at the... Uh, this article here so what really happened let's have a let's have a look the gold industry has been shaken after it was discovered that 83 tons of fake gold bars have been used as a collateral collateral is a kind of thing um, when i want to take out a loan i must give some money back up front and say okay this is uh, my house and if something bad happens to to me and i cannot pay back the loan you can take my house so then the gold was there to actually be used as collateral 
and uh, if something bad happened to the loans, so you would take the gold. But the thing is now we see that uh, gold could not serve as collateral because it was fake. Now it was worth 20 billion yuan from 14 financial institutions. The amount of gold would be equivalent to 22% of China's annual gold production. So every year, China may, you know, make some gold, some kind of gold products. This can be even gold bars. And this amounts to 22% of the yearly annual production. And 4.2% 4, 4 of the gold reserve of China. So pretty big. So now if I imagine that 4% of Bitcoin would be fake, uh, there's no way that this could happen. That uh, one day somebody would come and tell me, hey, the gold that you have, uh, or sorry, the Bitcoin that you have is fake because you are one of the people of the 4.2% of the people holding it who got this unfortunate fake gold or fake Bitcoin. So hey, I'm, I'm back. Yeah, great. I only explained how this works here. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go back. We are on page eight from 11, so we are getting there. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about crypto. Crypto is verifiable on the blockchain anytime, anywhere. Crypto is easily divisible. We, you can divide gold, but it's not easy. You would need some people and machines and so on. Yeah. Uh, and movable anywhere. Uh, two, weeks, two years ago, I traveled through 20 countries. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, in one year. Wow. And uh, I had crypto and like nobody knew, right? And you like, like used it to pay something? I did not. I didn't. I didn't. But I mean, imagining that uh, I would have the same amount in gold that I had, mm -hmm. I would have a lot of trouble at the airport. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. This way, you keep your private key and uh, you can go anywhere and access your funds anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right? The big difference. Crypto can be used on a daily basis. Uh, gold will be useful only if everything goes bad. Like mm -hmm. you, you cannot go to a shop and give them gold, right? Nobody will care. So that's the thing. Mm -hmm. They will care if uh, cash stops working. Yeah, mm -hmm. then they will care, but not now. Yeah. The new digital generation now growing into adulthood, like you, mm -hmm. will only propel. Propel is like make it even more uh, important. Propel mm -hmm. crypto further, while the old generations of gold absolutists will decrease. So well, people who are like always into gold, they are getting old now, while mm -hmm. the young generation who grow up with uh, an iPad in their in their ha hands, mm -hmm. they will use more crypto. It will be very natural for them. Yeah, well, if properly educated. Yeah, yeah, sure. But it will become like, uh, it will become very common around you. Whether it comes from the government or not, it will become very common. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Now, there are pros and cons of both, and it's always good to diversify and manage risks another possibility is gold back crypto this exists so yeah I, yeah i know the bitcoin gold or something no 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 that's no, not, no that's just the name yeah don't trust oh. it. yeah that's a fake bitcoin okay. that's fake bitcoin. <laughs> uh don't trust it but uh they are i forgot what it's called but there is an actual crypto that is backed by gold yeah they're called called stable coins some of, yeah, they might be. They might be stable, yes. Or they might be packed to gold. So it would, it would be the same as gold. And if it goes up or down, that depends on gold. So uh, you would still rely on the third party. All right? You are getting some kind of crypto and they promise you that if you come back to their company one day, they will give you the gold. Mm -hmm. All right? So you still have to trust them. So that's, that's my problem, actually, you know? Yeah, I think I changed my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to change it. I'm just giving you my. Uh, but anyway, here you have some ideas about this. Lots mm -hmm. of it, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that's it. What's your most fascinating, interesting experience with cryptos? Uh, great question. I was thinking about it for a while. There are so many things, but just recently there there was this thing. A uh, uni airdrop happened for being one of the people. So Uniswap is a decentralized exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was one of the, when, when it started, it started maybe six months ago. And when it started, I was one of the first people in the first months that were calling the smart contract, that were using it for selling and buying things. Mm -hmm. And one day I got up in the morning and I suddenly received 400 uni tokens. 
each address oh. that interacted with the contract. So they actually created unit tokens for uh, for the ecosystem. And mm -hmm. I don't know how they work. I did not really care much. I never really mm -hmm. studied how it works, but probably you can decide the changes uh, or you can get some kind of uh, cuts from the fees that people pay when they use the platform. You will be able to get some money from people using it from the fees that they are paying. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I sold it. Yeah, I sold it quickly. And uh, 400 unit tokens were $2,400. Okay, mm -hmm. can you turn off your microphone for a while? Oh, yeah, of course. It's too loud. Yeah. Uh, so 400 unit tokens were $2,400. That's like, you know, six, 60,000 per ground, probably. No? No, 50,000 per ground. So it was a nice gift, you know, that I got simply for. Um, for using new technology. And I got 50,000 check rounds for free. And that was for each address. So that's the thing. If uh, I had used more addresses, and even if I've only bought and sold a few dollars, you know, I would still be considered uh, eligible for getting the airdrop of the token. So I would get like, you know, 50,000 check rounds for each address, but I only had one. <laughs> so too bad yeah but still pretty good pretty good there was a really crazy morning with this unexpected airdrop as a reward for simply pioneering the cutting edge technology so for simply trying new things you know with blockchain i got rewarded 50,000 check rounds um let me show you where uniswap is now uniswap is used a lot now it's the most popular decentralized exchange yeah i've been on the website but i didn't really Use it. Uh, you cannot use it if you don't have a MetaMask. You cannot use it. You must uh, download MetaMask. Mm -hmm. I, I can show you today if you want. Uniswap. So it's still um, 3.21 now. So uh, times 400, right? Even today, it's still a lot of money. Uh, and I saw it very early, you know? It's been out for a while only. Let me see. I think the yeah, airdrop happened here. That will happen uh, mid-September, in the mm -hmm. middle of September. And then I sold it like you know around five dollars fifty, like six dollars, mm -hmm. something like that, over mm -hmm. here. Because I did not care about it, you know. Like, yeah, I understand. You know, hey, it's for free, and now I should sell it while it's high. You know? <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, the best thing that ever happened, I think, in uh, in blockchain for me. Now, apart from this, it's coding my own simple DApp. So I showed you some of the code, uh, daily fun from regular waves of memes regarding scandals and successes of crypto. This community is really funny. Uh, they have lots of memes and a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun every day watching the, the, the memes, you know. Have you seen the uh, your funds are Safu meme? No? Can you send me the link? I can open it here. Uh, just in YouTube, your funds are Safu. It's, it's a meme well, about it's safe, right? But it's uh, for Chinese, yeah. no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in... <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I really like the meme. It's like pretty weird, but it's pretty funny. Your what? Your... Uh, your funds are Safu. Okay. Let's see. In the first one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy from Binance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Is that what happened to you on Binance? Uh, no, no. I just um, uh, lost my money because of the margin call. Oh, I see. I see. So that's the same thing that happened with OKX, as we said. You know, when you start using decentralized exchanges, you will never want to go back to centralized ones. Well, when I see this, I feel so... Uh, scared you know that mm -hmm. i have my money there mm -hmm. i need to withdraw my funds yeah that's the problem yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like pretty funny you can watch it uh, after the, the lesson but it's yeah. pretty funny at the end it's like a lot of um uh, like uh links to uh some movies exactly really, really it, it reminds me of uh, south park when uh, Stan was uh, wanted to put money into the bank, and they mm -hmm. said, hey, "Yeah, we will invest it for you," and blah 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 blah, he was speaking, and then and it's gone. Have you seen? <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, that, that's exactly it, you know, like you put some money into Binance now and uh, okay, I will just put it here. I will do margin trading and it's gone. Yeah, yeah totally. Like... Fortunately, only lost $15. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I had days when I lost a lot of money and days when I made so much. It just depends, you know. Like um, my dad, he did a lot of trading in Forex and he did t tell me not to use margin or yeah. not to leave some money overnight. And I did it and I lost my money. You see, you should have listened to your dad. But yeah. look, you learn the most from your own mistakes. Mm -hmm. You said, yeah. Now, what crypto brokerages do you use or recommend? So uh, we are back to square one, as we said before. The best start is on centralized exchanges, CEX. That's the very common abbreviation. You should learn this one, CEX. And then we have DEX. Mm -hmm. Centralized exchange, decentralized exchange. Now, Binance and Coinbase are arguably the most secure and user-friendly. Mm -hmm. This comes at the cost of quite high fees, especially on Coinbase. For now, mm -hmm. they are the best places to change fiat into crypto and vice versa. There have been scandals with CXs getting hacked or stealing freezing withdrawals, as I showed you with OKX. Yeah. Or simply, they can be hacked. A lot of money has been stolen like this. I wouldn't use and rely on them too much, especially the Chinese ones. Why? Mm -hmm because Chinese government can crack down on anything. They have the ultimate power in the mm -hmm. country. Don't keep your funds there forever and send your bags to a wallet where you hold the private keys. Yeah. Uh, there, is, there are some examples here. Withdrawals are frozen for five weeks on OKX. Then hacked cryptocurrency exchange. Cryptopia. I used it once, I remember. Uh, only once. And then uh, I read like a year later, that it's not that doesn't exist anymore and all the people lost their money mm -hmm. so you can imagine that now i'm a little bit scared of using this you know mm -hmm. so li liquidation in 2019 right and they were hacked basically they they stole all the money from it and what was the exchange cryptopia a oh, cryptopia yeah. this is in uh, new zealand i think this okay. comes from new zealand uh yeah this professional services from grand thornton new zealand Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, like after this, uh, you know, I'm happy that decentralized exchanges yeah. are, are becoming popular now mm -hmm. and safe because they were not safe before. They are much safer mm -hmm. now. So, DEXs are the future. Marketplace is running on a code. There's no third party holding your funds, and you don't need privacy, including KYC. You had to do KYC, no, on Binance. Yeah, I have. Yeah, so know your customer. You know, uploading your ID mm -hmm. and. So and in uh, the DEXs, I don't have to do that? No, of course not. Oh, wow. Cool. It's just the code. Like, who would be holding the, your your uh, ID? It's just the code. You are only calling the smart contract. That's all. Mm -hmm. OK. You see, that, that's the future of the internet, I'm telling you. You know, like, once you start <laughs> using it, you will see the power in it, you know? I the, felt like the, the Binance was the only way it could be done. Of course not. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. The only way is now, like, uh, but it will come eventually to mm -hmm. change fiat into crypto like this. Yeah, like if to change fiat into crypto, I have to like. Uh, do yes, this because long. then you are sending it to a bank, so you yeah, will yeah. need to explain and do the taxes. You know, mm -hmm. that's not such a problem. But now you don't have to rely on some kind of like Chinese guy in Singapore. Yeah, who will do everything well for Binance, and he will not be shut down by some government. You know, mm -hmm. because then nobody will help you. Dex will always run, it will be there, and it, it can be hacked, and it always works. Mm -hmm. This is just on a blockchain, you know? Okay. You're calling the blockchain, basically, every time you use it. I've used Uniswap so many times, I stopped counting, and uh, it, it has always worked. It's just mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you need to pay high fees for Ethereum, but when Ethereum goes to proof of stake, it should be super simple, fast, and cheap. Mm -hmm. So I will mm -hmm. see. Anyway, uh, Uniswap is very limited still. Uh, there is no order book. There are no limit orders that you know from Binance. Yeah. And oh, they only support Ethereum chain, which mm -hmm. supports, you know, 2,000 cryptocurrencies. But you I could, think even less. Uh, you, you can basically do it with any crypto, almost with any crypto there, but only that are running on the Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, no Bitcoin, no XRP. No, uh, what else? No Teller, no Zilliqa. There are so many. All right. Mm -hmm. And you might want to use them, but you can't. Mm -hmm. But new DEXs, 
which allow interchain operability are getting built. So it will happen soon. And mm -hmm. Coin is a good example. Coin DeFi, it's very fresh right now. I'm watching this a lot. Coin DeFi is a good and very fresh example, but there are so many competitors and they are racing to get such a product out. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, have a look at um, Uniswap. Where is Uniswap uh, app? Uniswap.org, right? Uh, let's see if it loads. So imagine now I go on Uniswap, I, I will check, okay, I want to swap. Yeah, that's the Web3. Start the crypto wallets and reload, right? Web3, mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, I'm not loading anything here, but I want to see... I want to see the website, what's happening. It could be black. Yeah, sometimes, you know, on this browser, I, I block a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, br br Brave, I have heard about it. And I think yeah. I even used it when I had Linux. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Brave is a good, a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will use Chrome now. <laughs> I'm <Yes. not. laughs> Chrome anyway, you know. I, I never used this one. So here, Uniswap interface. Let's see. And I will just show you how it works, okay? Mm -hmm. So that you get the idea. That's like decentralized exchange. And as I said, you know, this is very simple and limited. That's why there will be better ways soon, I think. And the next year, I think it will work. So I'm still waiting. Sorry for this. No, it's okay, it's okay. It's quite important that I want to show. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. So this is Web3. This is where you connect the wallet. You will use, you have many ways. I always use MetaMask, but I'm sure there are many, even Coinbase wallet, you see? Mm, so yeah. You can even connect like the third party to this. Um, mm -hmm. You will connect it. It will show you how, my, how many ETH you have, all right? Mm -hmm. Or how many, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And then you can choose the coin here, or you can uh, put the smart contract here. You will, you know, the smart contract will be like this. You put it here, yeah, and you can start trading. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's just like uh, Bitcoin. It's like from A to B only. You cannot mm -hmm. program it. You you cannot uh, say if uh, Ethereum goes lower, then sell it, or if if Ethereum goes higher, sell it. It's not. Mm -hmm. But they are building it now. This is a very fresh thing. Mm -hmm. But I cannot imagine now my life without this. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but it's just for ETH. If mm -hmm. they do it for other coins, you know, for other blockchains, that would be amazing. So mm -hmm. that you will go here, you would say, okay, I want to sell ETH and buy Bitcoin. Because, mm -hmm. Right? It's not here. Yeah. yeah. These are, these are the, just called the wrapped Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. This is when you put Bitcoin on an Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. All right. But now you have to trust it that uh, you can always sell the wrapped Bitcoin for real Bitcoin. So this this um, uh, Bitcoin that runs on Ethereum, it has the, the same price as Bitcoin? More or less, yeah. Uh, it's very close. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you have the tether that is packed to dollar, you can mm -hmm. always find uh, the RAND Bitcoin or the wrapped Bitcoin mm -hmm. and that is packed to Bitcoin. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, it's, yeah, wrapped Bitcoin here, number 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, market cap, wow, two billion dollars are in in this. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people already yeah. use it because then you can program Bitcoin on with a smart contract. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Bitcoin is moving to Ethereum blockchain. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Because simply Bitcoin doesn't support it, you know. Uh, so mm -hmm. and when Dexes support uh, interchain oper operability, and you can then work, you know. Bitcoin to Ether, Ether to XRP, that would be amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. for example, you, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, no, uh, you, you end your sentence. Yeah, I, will, I wanted to say that Tether, for example, is the ERC20 token. The, the most popular stable coins are actually running on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So that is also quite amazing because basically on the Uniswap, you can just uh, change it into... Uh, in two dollars, if you want. Let's mm -hmm. say I want to sell five ETH, and I get uh, two thousand four hundred eighty-eight dollars. Yeah. And but how does uh, Vitalik um, pay uh, his uh, developers? 
Oh, I'm sure that uh, does he, he like make money from Ethereum? From the early days, I believe that his uh, foundation that he began, that uh, they locked a lot of Ethereum that is uh, getting unlocked for them. Oh. Or if they have it, they will they will slowly sell it over time mm -hmm. to, to pay yeah. for all the expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, Vitalik is like, I don't know how it works there today, but I think it's very decentralized already. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, even open source programmers work on this in their free time and they make like passive profit from DeFi from mm -hmm. from using blockchain they or they get some other jobs so a lot of people work on this actually like in a decentralized manner and they mm -hmm. see their code they update the code right mm -hmm. they talk about the problems in the code and they can always check it it's on github you know you will find everything yeah 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 i know that it's, it's all on github i just don't understand it yeah, it's a it's a crazy world out there i know now, um, so that's my idea, basically, that uh, DEXs will improve mm -hmm. soon. I think by the end of next year, uh, we will already have a working DEX that, that supports more chains. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, centralized ex exchanges cannot really compete with that. Mm -hmm. they, will, they will only become like uh, fiat on ramps, as we say. In uh -huh. They will only be facilitating banks to bank to uh, crypto and crypto to bank mm -hmm. but they will not really not many people are going to use them afterwards if if other people can do it in a decentralized manner somewhere mm -hmm. else and they can do the same thing why would they go to yeah, yeah. Planet, right i mean it was mm -hmm. the problem. so anyway there, there's more to read about this and now the last question yes now the last question why are cryptos pumping now so in short uh, difference between 2017 and now working products so right now i have showed you uniswap i have showed you uh yes i have to show you one thing here DeFi. i've talked about DeFi, carol do you remember uh yeah that coin That's DeFi. Big. uh it was the uh oh. transfer between coins you're right you're right but uh there's just one product from DeFi. But if you remember from my presentation last week, we talked about DeFi, that it means a decentralized exchange. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sorry, uh, sorry for, forget it. Yeah, it's been two hours. I'm a little bit tired from it. Now, yeah. decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. Decentralized finance. So, um, uh, like the coins have a, the, a program in them. Yeah. So, for example, you can program money in DeFi, decentralized mm -hmm. finance loans casinos marketplace mm -hmm. betting on games matches mm -hmm. uh social the social media if there's money in it then yes mm -hmm. you can even organize elections streaming mm -hmm. platforms mm -hmm. basically you are um programming banks that's what you do you are programming banks a bank running on a code without a boss mm -hmm. and that's why we have cfi cfi and defi mm -hmm. right cfi is like your everyday bank that you know yeah. DeFi mm -hmm. is the Uniswap or coin. What I wanted to show you here on DeFi Pulse, I left the links here. On DeFi Pulse, you can find how, ma how much money is locked in DeFi. So that means people are using DeFi. All right. Oh, like how many uh, like dollars are. Yeah, yeah. How many dollars are cryptos? now? Yes. Yes. Wow. Look at this. Uh -huh. so people are talking about economies crashing or growing, but this is the global economy right here global mm -hmm. that means this money can come from any country in the world and it can be used by anyone in the world it is mm -hmm. open to everyone this one mm -hmm. and nobody can stop it there's mm -hmm. like no way to, to lock it so let's have a look at how it works you can have a list here this is the chain it runs on ethereum 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 <laughs> all the way there is only one different zero bitcoin that's for paying lightning network paying. Mm -hmm. ethereum 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 Everything is on Ethereum. Now, mm -hmm. so let's see. We have lending. So this is for lending money. Mm -hmm. right? You can, then again, you can see how much money is here. And again, it's growing mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, people are locking their money. You can earn interest on this, mm -hmm. just like in a bank, but probably much better interest. And because it's still like in its early days, I'm sure there are a lot of risks still. Mm -hmm. There's Maker, Compound, and Aave. If you want to study this, 
these three are very important. You can find a lot of information about this. Dexis, this is the one I showed you, right? Uniswap. So these are like coins based on the Ethereum code? Uh, not coins. These are like products. You should think of them as products, but they have their own coin. For example, Maker oh. is a coin, Compound is a coin, Ava is a coin. But they all have some internet products. Yes. And mm -hmm. okay. you know what the product is? Is the smart contract. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Those are smart contracts, basically. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how, all right? Wait. So let's say Maker. Maker was the first, like the real groundbreaking uh, smart contract like this. Uh, Maker should be in top 100 for sure. 44, okay. So when you go here, you will find here Etherscan. This is mm -hmm. where you can find, and they have their own website too, but let's go on Etherscan. So when you go here, you can find a token, all right? Now, as I said in uh, last week, tokens run on uh, Ethereum blockchain. They are the ERC20. It's also here, mm -hmm. ERC20. Mm -hmm. This is how much money is in uh, Maker. That means people who use uh, the smart contract, they can invest in this coin and uh, they will be getting uh, their cut from the fees that people are paying on uh, mm -hmm. the smart contract. Mm -hmm. And how can you find it? So you can find all the transfers, all the all the transactions are here then people who are holding it holders are here so you know those are probably some some of the contracts and also people you know like somebody here is, is holding this many mm -hmm. okay you can open it and see uh his transactions or her transactions yeah but we can't trace it to a person you could i mean if uh, you saw that he was moving money from and to the centralized exchange mm -hmm. and you ask oh. the centralized exchange to uh, to uh, you know reveal the identity of the person yeah. you could uh -huh. okay you could, yeah. if you know who the person is behind the address it is basically not anonymous everybody mm -hmm. knows now you can what i wanted to tell you is that you can find the smart contract contract is here mm -hmm. click on the contract and then uh, you can find the contract here, the actual code. The actual code is here. Mm -hmm. it, as you see, it is transparent. Everybody can come and see. Mm -hmm. No, no, no secrets here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So uh, these are the DeFi statistics. I suggest studying this, especially if you want to find. Uh, always look up the top three. Top three are the most important. Then Dexis, derivatives. I know synthetics, but I don't really use it. But mm -hmm. uh, and then payments. I have never used it too. All mm -hmm. right. Now, uh, but I use Dexis a lot. Dexis and lending. I have used lending. Ave, I have used already. Not to lend money myself, but I could. But I borrowed for uh, um, for arbitrage once. Uh, I programmed a little. It's called a flash loan. Have you heard about it? Flash loan. Oh flash loan yes oh no i don't know what it is it's a new thing okay now so what you can do with uh, with this you can borrow a lot of money mm -hmm. and in one transaction you can buy let's say 100 ether for mm -hmm. 500 dollars in one place mm -hmm. yeah. right and then you will borrow 1 million dollars to buy all of it and in the same block with the same transactions in the same block, you will also say that you want to sell 500 ether for $500. You want to sell it on a different exchange for $502. Oh, okay. Right. And you will do it with $1 million that you borrow mm -hmm. in one transaction in one block that will take uh, 10 seconds to mine. Mm -hmm. You will actually borrow money, borrow 1 million. You will, you will do four trades and then mm -hmm. you will return one million back together wow. with some little fee and you will make money from it yeah but right. if it's but if it crashes like from 500 to 400 you're pretty much <laughs> now here's the thing um it happens either all at once or it doesn't happen oh okay you see that's the big difference you cannot lose money on it you, you cannot get like destroyed uh -huh. because if at the end of the transactions in the block uh, the money cannot be returned, then the, the block will not will not get uh, like validated. And all the transactions will not happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. so they either happen at the same time altogether, or mm -hmm. they don't happen at all. Mm -hmm. 
that's that's how amazing it is this can, bank can never do this like that I, me like a normal guy you know like in prague I, i'm not rich you know i just can come and i can borrow one million dollars in crypto for 10 seconds uh -huh. you know and then and then return it in 10 seconds mm -hmm. again you know so it's wow this is genius I, I, I don't, <laughs> it is mind-blowing i'm telling you it is mind-blowing yeah these things uh Wow. When you when you start coding a little bit, it's not so, such a difficult thing to do, you know. Like, mm -hmm. Yes, it is, but if you spend some time on it, you know, you can learn it. Uh, but the worst difficult, the most difficult thing is to find the opportunities like this because mm -hmm. you are not the only person doing it. Mm -hmm. and you are trying to code it, you know, and then somebody else will use this opportunity. Yeah. The difference between uh, prices on different exchanges. Mm -hmm. okay? So uh, basically, what's the revolutionary thing? Any, anybody in the world can come, you know, whether you're in Nigeria, Japan, the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. you can code something and suddenly you get a lot of money that you can uh, play around with. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you cannot lose them because uh, if you cannot pay back, you will not even borrow them. Mm -hmm. it, it's called a flash loan now. Maybe I should yeah. write here. First history, simply flash loan. Yeah, with, uh, with this... Uh, banks that we have now, this is just impossible. Exactly. <laughs> just yeah. I mean, thinking they about it. They, they cannot compete because how can you compete with the world capital? It's like all the yeah. people put money together and it's running on a code. Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a, this is incredible, this thing. No. Uh -huh. So uh, let's come back to the question then. So uh, basically, the previous pump was based on ICOs and promises. Now we <laughs> have we have products. Mm -hmm. I told you, right? Dexis, lending. Uh, there's more, oh, and that's just okay. that's just DeFi. There's there's more. There, this is just DeFi, but there are other things mm -hmm. now. Some of which we can already enjoy today. It mm -hmm. is similar to the dot com bubble. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of new companies they came and said, "Hey, we will do this, this, this." Some of them survived. Ninety nine percent were destroyed. Mm -hmm. So the the same will happen in crypto. A lot of the hype to, uh, is running on mainstream entering the space, like banks, investors, and services, such as people. Mm -hmm. This is uh, where it comes from today, number mm -hmm. one. Then DeFi, number two, is totally leading the way with decentralizing banking and making it fair, transparent, and efficient. Mm -hmm. it is, it's still pretty fresh, so lots of projects may come and go, but DeFi is staying. Mm -hmm. uh, then the next thing, the other aspects uh, are NFTs non-fungible mm -hmm. token fungible means that you can uh, when i have one token one bitcoin you have another bitcoin then we can exchange it mm -hmm. and, uh, it is the same bitcoin but mm -hmm. if you have the non-fungible token that means you will have one special token and nobody else will have the same one mm -hmm. now these tokens they can represent uh, something like your house for example Mm -hmm. someone's house oh, okay. so, so you will uh, let me tell you how it will work ERC 721 we had ERC 20 right this is ERC 721 so uh, imagine you want to buy a house um, but look again this is very fresh so you will not find many cases in real life right now especially mm -hmm. in our country but uh, if you want to buy a house you need to go to a bank Will, mm -hmm. will tell them everything about you, how well you can pay back, and they will give you a mortgage for a house. Mm -hmm. Now the bank will simply put zeros on your account. They don't really have the money, but they will put the zeros there and you can go and buy the house. Mm -hmm. Then you will slowly pay the money back and it is based on a contract that you have with the bank. Mm -hmm. Now what you can do with the non-fungible tokens, one of the possible usage is that uh, you can have the house represented as a token. It mm -hmm. will be a token that will be for $1 million. And what you will need to do, you will, uh, you will actually pay for the token, right? You will get the house and you will be paying for the token. And when you have the full token, the house is yours, mm -hmm. right? This okay. will be, basically you are funneling the money from all around the world. Mm -hmm. And you are you have to be legally bound. There will be a contract where which you will sign. It will be under some jurisdiction. It can be in a, in a country, and the people around the world, anywhere, they can decide. Okay, I will uh, 
I will lend my money to this guy because I, I believe oh, it. Okay. They, will, they will all agree. They will all okay. agree. They will say, okay, we, we agree. You will find five possible investors in you. They will draft <laughs> you. You will find five around the world and then you will sign a contract with them. Mm -hmm. It will be a smart contract on the code and the mm -hmm. real contract in the real life, mm -hmm. All right? With them. But but uh, if this all is digitally, you still need a, like a, a real paper that gives you access to the house that this house is yours. Who will have the paper? Exactly. So then there will be like real real lawyers who will provide uh, the the usual paperwork. Mm -hmm. If you stop paying your money, then. Uh, there would be in the smart contract it would be executed on its own that you would lose the, the, okay, the property okay. and uh, you would sign it in the contract that if you stop paying the money mm -hmm. then uh, you would lose the ownership of the house mm -hmm. so okay. it would be done automatically you know on the code wow this is really sci-fi i know this is sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. i'm telling you about the freshest things in blockchain right now nfts mm -hmm. are like the, the most fresh thing at the moment mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, this, right now it sounds like sci-fi, but I believe that this is really going to take off. Yeah. It, because, <laughs> because now you can borrow money from anywhere around the world, no matter who you are. Imagine a lot of countries around the world have no banks. They mm -hmm. have no access to finance, you know. So mm -hmm. th this is for them, especially because now they can uh, access world capital, basically, and uh, they can invest, you know. Like you oh, usually those people in those countries, they don't have much money at, at all. So that's also a problem. Well, maybe they do. They have businesses, but they don't really have, uh, they are not part of the international banking system. Mm -hmm. like a lot of oh, people okay. there, they might be rich, they might be rich, but they have their local currency. You know, mm -hmm. they, they have no way to send money around the world, mm -hmm. you know. So it does not, for example, you know, in Bangladesh, when I visited the place, a lot of people there did not have any bank. They, they were not part, uh, you know, they were not connected to any bank. Mm -hmm. So they just use it, used some they government had cash, They had cash and uh, the government issued money mm -hmm. uh, or they had some precious metals, you know, gold. Mm -hmm. But now they can simply go online and, uh, but look, this is again, very fresh, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, not that easy right now to program these things and legally do it but it will mm -hmm. become easier and easier over the mm -hmm. years uh, but basically what you are doing is that you have a world bank that uh, acts fairly and anybody can access it that's basically the idea you know and i'm sure there'll be many other ways to use it it's just one example it can be for a car you know it can be for yeah 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 i understand yeah this is really fascinating it is mind-blowing yeah i know <laughs> now basically uh, if we put all these aspects together then the whole market is simply more mature before it was just hopium you know everybody was just hoping but now they are real product and there are tons of opportunities and a lot of new companies are looking for talents to to work on this mm -hmm. so there's a lot to read i, I left yeah, a lot yeah. here uh, even about the non-fungible tokens. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many, uh, let's say many terms we need to remember. DeFi, CeFi, NFT, mm -hmm. ERC 721. Mm -hmm. I won't be bored in the next few weeks. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. Well, I'm happy that I could inspire you. Uh, I'm telling you that, yeah, this is uh, kind of like a silent revolution, you know, in technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much for taking this time to explain this all to people that are interested. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And I'm really happy I did not have to speak on my own for two, two hours, you know. Yeah, that would be pretty yeah, sad. Yeah. Are there still any questions you want to ask? Oh, of course, feel free to send me an email. Anybody who is watching this or mm -hmm. you as well, send me an email if there's still something unclear or if you want more tips or details about things, I can always help you with mm -hmm. it. I just wanted to uh, tell you that I have like in 11 days ago, there uh, was a new uh, cryptocurrency introduced named Hu Huyobi and it uh, uh, it has Huyobi Ethereum, Hu Huyobi uh, Bitcoin and it, they like copied all the uh, main cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. and it is like a Chinese centralized cryptocurrency that 
goes by the same price as it, as these cryptocurrencies. I have not heard about it, but uh, it sounds very logical because if you remember, we talked about the government issuing yeah. the, the tokens that will represent the real thing, but it will just be like uh, cash yeah, backed exactly. by gold. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised it's happening in China. Yeah, now from this lecture, I understand what, what it means, like that probably this Chinese company just wants to take over, over the chi Chinese market of cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so generally, uh, as I said before, this technology is here, it is staying, mm -hmm. and it's up to us how we use it. And I'm afraid that too many people are too comfortable, so they will be shocked when this comes in yeah. the form of digitized, digitalized cash that will be controlled by a centralized entity. Well, as you said, they maybe not not be shocked because it will be a new generation. Maybe like the next generation it. after us, they wouldn't be shocked anymore. They would like they might welcome it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like, again, like if uh, the user interface is not made easy enough, like I had to learn you know, a lot of things to do it. Mm -hmm. the user interface is still very difficult, and uh, mm -hmm. let's say the government creates an app that uh, will be much easier to use, like WeChat in China. When mm -hmm. I live. I, later at school, I can show you how WeChat works. Okay. Want. But it's it's really interesting because they have just one app for everything. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you can buy the train tickets, flight tickets. You can um, book hotels. You buy food. You pay for electricity. You pay for water, and all is centralized in this one app that is controlled by the government. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And of course, they can. It's just the number on your account, how much money you have, and they can freeze it anytime. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, I like well it's communism yeah <laughs> yeah or communism or fascism you know basically yeah, yeah. more like fascism yeah fascism is like you're free to have your own business you can get rich but basically the government and uh, the economy and government are connected together the big corporations yeah, they, and the government. Mm -hmm. communism is that the government takes over everything and they control <laughs> everything so uh -huh. they can yeah. it either will they allow uh business players like huge corporations to run mm -hmm. and then they will be together so then you have the real fascism like in china mm -hmm. where they allow people to get rich as mm -hmm. long as you're okay with the government you know mm -hmm. yeah i i really it's find it is more like north korea i would say That's yeah like yeah it's weird that we have communists but we have like billionaires this just doesn't add up most billionaires are in China, actually. And, uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, by numbers, because they have the numbers, you know. If you take, let's okay. say, one in a million people are billionaires in China, then or mm -hmm. even less, yeah. it will still be a lot, lot of people, probably like 200 billionaires in China, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are, all of them are connected to the government, because yeah. government is the economy there. Basically. Yeah, yeah, that makes so, sense. So, you know, Fascism and communism, they are very close together. It just yeah, depends, yeah. Um, you know, I promise not to speak about politics, uh, but, yeah. but it's the yeah. other side of the same coin, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like government takes over economy and looks after, you know, um, production, consumption, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. money creation, all of it. Yeah. Well, I know even less about this than about cryptocurrency. Of course, yeah. I mean, yeah. we are here. We are here to learn. And uh, mm -hmm. these are the things that I did not learn at school. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why I organized, you know, this uh, special seminar for mm -hmm. for those interested, mm -hmm. not just to learn about crypto, but also how money works. You know, I hope that mm -hmm. uh, you also learned something about it too. Yeah, I I, I really read Investopedia a lot now. I right. like learn about how this works, and it's very cool. So never oh. use merchant trading, yeah, please. I, yes. <laughs> I've never done this and I don't intend to do it. Yeah, never. It's like, it, it, yeah, it's like the, the playing uh, a, a flipping fl flipping coin, but it uh, ends in like 60% 60 for the brokerage and 40% for me. So it's really bad. Yeah, and, exactly. uh, I have one question not related to cryptocurrencies about yeah. your uh, traveling you did because I was uh, I saw some videos on YouTube mm -hmm. where people explain how they traveled through like China through some kung fu uh, something uh, some yeah. palaces on a mountain and it seemed really cool to me and I was 
like thinking about maybe uh, trying something like that in my future. Sure. Well, let's hope that uh, you know the situation right now in the world. Well, yeah, yeah. The, will be allowed. Yeah. Hard to say. I have a website about my travels if you want to see. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's called Quest for Discovery. Let me send it to your chat. I have a lot of videos there, and uh, basically, it can it can inspire you. I hope as well in this mm -hmm. way. Uh, so let me show you what's here. Uh, you can just, you can see the screen. Good. Mm -hmm. So um, there are some videos. You can watch short videos. Those are teasers or movies. Mm -hmm. For example, 2018. Come on. So there are countries here: China, China, New Zealand. Those 10, 15 minutes each. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can watch it for fun, but then there's also, uh, I have written one book already, mm -hmm. book next year, I'll, I will see if I have time, uh, about traveling in, um, traveling in Eastern Asia and mm -hmm. living in China. So you can buy it on Amazon, this book, mm -hmm. it's, it's in English, mm -hmm. so you can actually learn from it. Here's a preview from the book. You mm -hmm. can also see the preview if you are interested. Like, mm -hmm. what are the the chapters in the book? All right. Mm -hmm. So here about China, uh, daily life, cultural, philosophical theory, mm -hmm. practical relationships, state, you know, education system, politics, mm -hmm. and then you can read a lot about this here. Well, and is your book successful? Uh, well, I have not really advertised it. Uh, I wrote it mainly for myself because uh, I was always writing along as I traveled or when I <laughs> lived there. And then I put it into a book and people who are interested can read it, but I have not really advertised it. So uh -huh. I have not sold any. Uh, I don't care about people like reading it or me making money on it. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, that, that's really cool. <laughs> it's cool though. I, I hope so. Basically, you know, uh, it's my big hobby. So I turned it uh -huh. into, and then I, there are some interviews for uh, for the newspaper that I did mm -hmm. maybe four years ago. Mm -hmm. You can find it here. It's in Czech. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are some events where you, here I had a speech at the university, and it's in Czech about uh, Asia. You can watch it if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, is, is it like in Karolová Univerzita? Uh, it's two hours, and uh, there's half an hour of questions, an hour mm -hmm. and a half of uh, talking about traveling in Eastern Asia. And mm -hmm. I also put some videos there, like uh, mm -hmm. as I speak, then I put videos there about when I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, I'll definitely w watch some of it. Yeah, th th this can be good for you, because uh, the first 20 minutes, I believe, I talk about how to travel cheap, mm -hmm. you know? Um, being a volunteer, going somewhere and working uh, four hours a day, mm -hmm. but having everything paid. You don't have to care about anything as you're there. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a good start. When I was uh, 18, 18, 19, 20, I, tra I traveled like this. You will even find it here. Mm -hmm. No, you will not. Yeah, 2014 and prior. Yeah, wait. So at that age, I did not have much money. So I had some, some job over the year. Mm -hmm. And then I used the money to like 15,000 Czech crowns and I traveled for two months mm -hmm. because they paid for everything, you know, I just had to arrive and then they paid for everything. Yeah, I understand. So yeah, there are some um, here, the until 2014, those are all volunteer projects that I did mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And you can really save money like this, but you know, you will come to a... A project where there are foreigners, a lot of foreigners from around the world, and mm -hmm. you work together maybe four hours a day, five hours a day for free. But you get mm -hmm. food, you do something good for the people, and also uh, you you get accommodation and food, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe some kind of like excursions around, some some trips that you can go mm -hmm. to for free. So I can I can definitely recommend it as well. Mm -hmm. but feel free to check it out. There's a well, lot of material. Thank you a lot. I really, in these two and a half hours, I learned not about only cryptocurrency, but this is really cool. But also about me, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to share it with your friends. Uh, I hope that this can uh, inspire them as well. That this works. Yeah. Out.
Also, you can see a little bit of my history, you know, like, let me show you one. All uh, right, wait. Like from the Chinese school, you know, we will see the, the Chinese student. So you were like teaching in China or you were yeah, like- yeah, yeah. yeah, I was there for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to enter a world stranger than you have ever imagined. The world which- Oh wait, the quality is bad, no? Oh, it's okay. Crazy, right? Yeah. So imagine like the numbers of people at first, then they're like nationalistic, you know, thinking mm -hmm. and, um, that they are all uh, the university that's quite small, but I mean, small in the Chinese way, you know, it, uh, mm -hmm. you have a city that you don't even know, you wouldn't know it by name. And there are 10 million people in the city. That's like a Czech Republic, mm -hmm. right? You don't yeah, even... yeah. And then there are four universities and at, in each university, there will be maybe 60,000 students. <laughs> wow. Right? So, and, and that's just the one small city, right? In China. So Shanghai, even bigger or Beijing. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Those are very different perceptions yeah, that you can, that you can yeah, get yeah. when you travel. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's why I was interested in China, that they are absolutely like a bit aliens to the uh, other world. Yeah, it is a very different world there, for sure. Uh, I learned a lot yeah, being there. I wouldn't go back. I wouldn't go back. Mm -hmm. I missed my home, you know, and life. Yeah, yeah, so, I get it. Um, and you will never be really welcome there, you know. Like, oh. like people, yes, you know, most people will be fine with you. But mm -hmm. having a family there, you are you might have a problem with the family of the girl that you might be interested in. Yeah, of course, yeah. They really care about it, you know. Like uh, mm -hmm. kids care about the parents' opinion and mm -hmm. the opinion of others. So, and then uh, visa, you know. Like mm -hmm. even if you speak Chinese and you work, you have worked there for a long time. You mm -hmm. can always get your visa revoked, and your your family will have to leave with you or. Mm -hmm there and they will most likely stay with their family so, mm -hmm. so you yeah. know, i wouldn't go for it now mm -hmm. anyway uh, but for a short time it was great for sure it was mm -hmm. great perhaps some yeah, time, that's why I perhaps some other time i can give a volunteer course in english again about travels i can tell you something about yeah yeah that that, that would be very cool yeah great uh, i will see you but later yeah right now i have to again mm -hmm. Uh, work on other things but uh, when i have time mm -hmm. I, I will maybe prepare some kind of special course for the course well basically a okay. lecture about travels how to travel mm -hmm. you know and opportunities in the world great countries to visit and so on mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. but anyway okay. thank you basically the end of blockchain course i i'm yeah. happy you have survived it until the end <laughs> I hope that you have learned a lot. All of you, yep. at least, who have seen the videos. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a while to prepare, so I hope that at least I could inspire one person. At least, even one person is enough. That's good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's you. Well, I, I think there will be some uh, guys that will watch this video and uh, also be very inspired by it. Let's hope so, yeah. I mean, I'm happy that uh, other people's lives might be better after this. I hope so. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. So thank you so much, Kirill. Yeah, you, you too. For... Take care. Yes. Thank you very much. It was Have a, a nice pleasure day. Having you here. Yeah. yeah. Thank bye you. Bye.